Chris Tanny. But I promise you, I'm about, where the heck is it? Oh, there it is, I think. The Danny Cadota Show! Hey, Danny, how are you, my friend? Good, Phil. We live? We're live, man. Whoa! We're on the air. Oh, well, we're here. We're coming on a little bit early, we're everybody. For our boys, but you know, hey, we figured, listen, the early bird, there's no doubt about it. When you're fishing, the early bird catches a worm. Yes, I mean, that's true. I was up at Casitas or Castaic, you could bet I was number one or number two. Generally tried to be number one in line. And it's the same thing when I was here at 22nd Street, right down the dock here. I left about it. I left an hour before most of the fleet. But you know, if you're you're a hardcore fisherman, you'll understand that having your choice of spots, freedom to fish wherever you want, and then of course, if you have the the intel which we had to you in doing your homework, um, that advantage you have and that extra time to get set up on spots to ascertain what's going on with current and everything else and make adjustments, that's crucial in your day. And so, uh, you know, getting your position alpha, whether it's a lake, stream, or the ocean, is a huge deal. Yeah. You know, of course, that understand, you know, understanding, too, some of the others, you know, the, the other little, uh, uh, what would you call them, uh, the veritables, you know, and making adjustments for them. Yes. You know, whether it's wind, current, you have to make your adjustments. But, you know, just the fact that you have position alpha and you're first out there, it, all, all through my fishing career, it's always um, made a huge difference. And Phil and I were just talking a little while ago, even the time I was four or five years old, fishing the streams up in the Sarahs, I would bug the family so much that nobody could sleep and they would finally kick me out of the station wagon. I'd be out there in the dark. But, you know... I'd have my I'd, I'd have my uh, little sister's limit, who was probably like six months old or anything. But I'd have her limit <laughs> by the time the sun came up, and I'd go back out. Get, you know. Well, you haven't changed one like, bit. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, Phil. <laughs> it's pretty pathetic. I have not. <laughs> and you know, it's really sad. You and I will be at the the show uh, uh, in a couple of weeks. You know, PCS at, show. At PCS show, and I'm going to bring my youngest one. The last time we took Gia, and uh, she was. Typical, you know, you can see it in her blood. Uh, she wouldn't get off the pond unless she got her five fish, you know, her, her limit that she released. And I got Kira, which is the two-year-old granddaughter, and I, I have a feeling she's going to be even deadlier, you know. So she's pumped up to go, and uh, we'll have to get some shots of that, Phil. That's going to be hilarious. Oh, absolutely. Be absolutely. But that's how you start off, folks, you know. That's you for sure. you hard for it. You want me to read a couple of uh, comments, yeah, Danny? We'll go. We got all right. Well, Dan ready. Smith says, hello, Phil, Captain Danny, and all you fine, salty fishing folks of the Freeman Adventures Good family. Evening. Hey, here come our guests, man. Hey, the boys We've got are two here. special guests here. Huh? Oh, just, uh, well, I can't. I, I'm doing a show. <laughs> go up in the office area. Yeah, there you go. And then we'll get you guys on here. Uh, and we'll, uh, let, if you want to jump in, go, TJ. Hey, yeah, go for hey. it. Hey, bud. How are you? Good, good to see morning. you. How are you? Good to see you. Tim Marquez says, hey, Phil, I'm on the Native Sun tomorrow. TJ, we're going to get right to you here. Uh, for my first halibut trip, and not sure what tackle or gear to bring, what do you and Danny suggest? So on well, there. Really, let's talk to the captains. Yeah, really. <laughs> They're talking about a three-way swivel, 25-pound, yep. a number four or six treble hook. Yep. And what would you say, two to four ounces? At least. Yeah, okay, maybe, maybe heavier. Yeah, possibly depends on the current and the tides. There's a little bit of breeze going on right now. Yes. So, you know, could be could need a little six to eight ounce to get down to the bottom there. Yeah, there hey, you TK, go. Have you guys mic. ever used trebles? Not very often. You know, you know it, it was funny. When I was in high school, we used to go fish down by the Tijuana Bull Ring. And uh, the, the guys that I learned from, they were all using trebles. And we, oh, yeah. We would yeah. Just so when I started, nail them. when I started yeah. in 1990, yeah, treble hooks were... We're big. Yeah, this is in the but 70s. But as it's pro as it's progressed, yeah, yeah, I mean, you just don't see it. unless you're strictly fishing for halibut and you're using a trap rig and you know you're double hooking. Yeah, some guys, some of the older guys are still or guys my age, you know, that aren't in the sophisticated status yet. You know, that, you know, <laughs> they uh, they'll, they'll still use a trap rig with a treble. You don't know that just brought something back. Uh, you know, uh, last year Phil, when, you know, I got that halibut up in the boat, but I dumped. I dumped two, oh, I and I kept I kept it kind of quiet. I knew you were gonna and it. now that it brings back <laughs> memories, I should have had a stinking treble on. I would have nailed those oh, two. Yeah, yeah. You weren't fishing you know? the trap. 
Now, I was fishing a single hook with a slider, but I got bit three times, yeah. and now that we come, it's coming back now. So keep that in mind, folks. You know, that's something that we haven't done. Yeah, I haven't second, done in a long time. Secondary hook, especially yeah. if you're fishing halibut. Yeah, it's amazing. And you want to read a few more of these? Yeah, things? yeah. Let's right. we're going to go for obviously, it. I mean, already, there's a ton of people saying hi to you. Well, but why don't you today. introduce yourself, talk about your rig, where you run out of, and then yeah. I'll read some comments. All right, well, good afternoon there, gang. I'm owner-operator TJ Schlick of the El Dorado. Uh, we run out of Berth 55 Long Beach. Uh, we're the primary overnight open party boat. Um, you know, we do anything from half-day trips up to two-and-a-half-day trips, depending on what the season calls for. Um, we're currently down doing our routine maintenance like most of the boats. Um, we're getting ready to wrap it up here and hopefully be back uh, online here in the next couple weeks, uh, you know, to go out and see what's biting. So that's uh, us in a nutshell, you know. All right, perfect. Ram awesome. Pacheco says, what's up, fellas? David Rosenthal. Good evening, Danny and Phil. Robert Graber. Good evening, Phil and Danny. This was before you walked in, so these guys didn't see you. Appreciate <laughs> your family. Sure. Happy It's Thursday. Uh, Patrick Harnjack up in Montana. Good evening, Phil and Danny. Daniel awesome. says he's happy to be here. Bill Wilkerson hey. is with us. Hey, Bill, I hope you are doing great. It's good to see you here. He says hi to both of us. Hey, Bill. Um, uh, Jeff Yeomans from 540 Slinger says... Good evening, Phil, Danny, and the Freeman Adventures family. And Chuck McDonald says, what to use on the Monte for this weekend? TJ, they're fishing wintertime bass, I think, on the Monte Carlo and Sculpin. Sliding sinkers. I'm not sure what bait's in the receiver right now. I know probably frozen squid. Uh, number twos and number two-odd hooks, sliding sinkers. Um, rockfish are still out, so you really don't need a, you know any heavy sinkers for that. But, um, you know, like I say, you're probably going to be fishing halibut, maybe doing some drifts, so... 25 pound test, twos, twos to fours on those, you know, and maybe even a trap rig set up. Yeah, in case awesome. you catch a halibut, right? You never know. Cool, Why not? cool, yeah. cool. What, what, do you, what do you make of this halibut fishing the last year or so? It's been great. Well, I mean, a lot of this stuff's been closed down, so we've had to look at other fisheries, you know. So it's like, you know, you're not able to catch this and you can't catch that. So we've been looking for other fisheries. And, you know, I mean, we haven't really been targeting halibut. Now we're targeting it and we're catching, you know, so it's that question of, has it always been there? Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, it's biting, but we're actually now actually, you know, making a valid effort to fish them. You know, even when I've been out at San Nick, you know, it's like we fish for the yellows and the sea bass in the morning. You slide in onto your beaches, you're drifting, catching a handful, you know, a couple handful of halibut, slide to the outside, catch your whitefish and rockfish and go home. And it's kind of part of this little uh, pattern that we've done. You know, whereas before, we didn't really go and jump on the halibut. It was fish your sea bass, fish your whitefish, fish rockfish, and go home. But, you know, they started putting the, the closures and making us look at other items, and now we're looking at other items, and, you know, halibut are biting, so it's part of our repertoire of what we're going to go catch. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's a good deal. Good hey! Uh, <laughs> that would be me. That's me. That's me. Hey, how are you, bud? Come on! How you doing? Good. Well, how, how are you, man? I'm good. How are it's you? Good to see you. I know. Can you slide no. up a little closer to there? Just slide over and up, and then. Oh uh, God! It's oh. this chair that bit me last time. I know. <laughs> I purposely. Provided I know that you for purposely you. gave me this chair. I did. Let's yeah. Oh see my you God! There? Yeah, we got you. All we can right. fix this a little bit better. <laughs> now everybody can be saying beautiful. Perfect. All right. There it is. Three ten rod works. Hey. You guys know who that is? That's Darren. Darren Dohe. Hey, Darren. Dohe. Danny and TJ. And we also, I want to send out prayers to his wife, Viv. She just went through an operation. I didn't know that. So, um, Darren, That's I hope it. everything's working out great, but prayers again going out to Viv. Absolutely. To tell her from all of us here. Yes. Uh, Raymond Pacheco, TJ, what's up, bro? You know that guy? I do know Ray. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> Dante says, good evening from San Diego. We got Montana, San Diego. We got all kinds of Dan Smith, David Rosenthal. Got the angler pliers. So nice. Thank you. That was fast. He was here just the other day and uh, provided us with some great pliers that he's putting out. You can go back and watch that podcast I did with David. He's a super great guy. Uh, let's see. Albert Ponce. Hello, fellas. Good to see you all. Albert, good to see you. Robert Graber. Good evening, TJ. Thanks for joining the show. And Will, you're just getting in. I, just so I, start I had to go say hi to the people in the office after I kind of used the facilities and I got sidetracked and pushed off into corners and had to say hi to people so 
It is what it is. All right. Slam, <laughs> Slam and Sammy's. Is that uh, Sammy Sutor <clears throat> from Ensenada? Does he come out with you guys? He says, hello, Phil, Danny, and Captain TJ and Friedman family. Great start to the show. I've been on the El Dorado. What a spacious boat. Love the El Dorado updates while they're fishing. Awesome info. Does a great job with that. I see that, man. You do do a great job. Yeah. People, people love to hear from the captain yeah. on the boat. So, I, so it all started out with, you know, sitting down, having round table with the boys, you know, and everyone's like, oh, you got to start doing the captain's tip. And I'm like, no, nah, that's been done. Oh, you got to start doing, no, nah, that's been done. So I just all of a sudden one day just picked it up and was like, this is what we're doing. This is what's going on. This is how it's happening. Here's what we're doing. Look at the boat. Okay. You know, and then the next day it was, oh, look, we're not catching anything. Today sucks. And the next day it was like, oh, look, they're biting. And it just kind of snowballed from there. And then it got to the point that everybody was expecting it. And I actually took two days off in August. I went to Vegas. I vacated for a couple of days. Got to go. How many I'm, messages I'm you have on your I'm phone, I'm sitting there right? playing blackjack. My phone's blowing up. Like, hey, what's the update? What's going on? What's the boat doing? It's like, oh. See, that's a good thing, though. Yeah, it was a that's good thing. That's a good yeah. thing. So, yeah, yeah. I did, I did realize thing. that I started something that's just going to be part of it. And Dude, I can relate with this morning briefing. Yeah. You know, I do it pretty much every oh, morning. Oh, yeah. 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 And, like, if I take a morning off. Oh, and what happened? Like, Nobody, are you okay? Yeah. Did you have a heart attack? I'm in Mexico. I got a tough buffalo down here. Sorry. You know, but... Yeah, yeah, you create know. a monster, but it's good. It's no, no, good. it's good. It's good. I, so I was walking around the Bart Hall show. Um, we went over there just to, to socialize. You know, Mr. Fukudo got out of the house for the day, and, and we went over there. And I had people walking up to me, you know, shaking my hand and saying, oh, thanks, and we watch you every morning, and da-da-da. Haven't been on your boat yet, but we watch all the updates, and it's like, oh, okay, cool, you know. So it's working. It reaches a lot of people. I mean, oh, yeah. Some of, some of my posts, like I say, I've, I've been to, Ch you know, reaching people in China and Puerto Rico. And, yeah, it's amazing. You know, all around amazing. the world. I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's so. it absolutely is. Yeah, I think we'll see more of that here this evening as it yeah. goes by. Yeah, like I say, like, you got Montana already. Yeah. Possibly south of the border. And, it's pretty crazy, right? Yeah, it's good I stuff. Know. It's good it's stuff. It's the power of that uh, it's, social it's the media. New, it's the new way it That's is. It. It, used, it started out where everything was word of mouth, and then it became the... Uh, you know the the platforms on the internet, or the, you know the bloody decks and the different uh, you know online well, deals. TJ, if you don't mind, before that it was nine seven six. It was nine seven six. Yes. Yeah. Who was that old? Who was that old guy? Oh, uh, some weirdo yeah. man. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> like Paul Strasser said, when he first saw it, he's going, "This will never work." What the hell is this guy <laughs> thinking about, man? Oh man, really never good. say that. Yeah, I don't <laughs> Long run there, yeah, dude. Eighty-five. Yeah, I started. I remember. That. I remember having to ask my mom, "Can I call my sister?" <laughs> 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 so I, was, I thought maybe it was a girl. I, I, I remember getting in trouble. What is this nine seven six? Yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. And my my dad coming around the corner going nine seven six tuna. Really? It's I'm a like, fishing thing. Like, it's fishing and. I want to know. Sure it is. <laughs> That's kind of the, that was because kind of the attitude. That was the only way you could get a live update of what was going on, or you had to look, you had to watch the newspaper counts every day. And then it's or the like, weekend. Yeah. Let's talk hookup. And yeah, I used to have to, sh I used to drive down to San Diego yeah. early in the morning to go do that. And then the worst yeah. thing you could do is like react when like Western Outdoor News would put it out because that's what happened last week. So then you get out right. there like, hey man, uh, it was biting like it right. was uh, right. last I used, week. I used to love the guys that would walk on the boat with their wives. Hey, it says it was biting. I'm like, it was from last, last week. week. Last week, that it was is wide a week open. old rag. That's true. It's changed. Yeah, you had to watch that newspaper when <laughs> all of a sudden changed. you saw the yellows pop up. 135 fish. It's like you jumped on because two days later there's gonna be 80 people on that boat. Now isn't that amazing? You can get a footage of of somebody shooting it into you from the boat live you know guy on a fish oh you know and, yeah. and it's it, that's how different it is yeah, now yeah. from when we grew up you know yeah. so it's so amazing. amazing yeah well and, and there's no like somebody said to me one day like i was doing something and i turned and there was per se rock and everybody started jumping my case oh dude you can't show I'm like what there is no secrets anymore because whether i say it's at per se the passengers are going to put it out there. It's it's going to get put over here. It's going to there is no secrets. That's so true. at that point, That's what's true. the point of, of trying to worry about? It? So true. you know what? Here it is. You know, here it is. Yeah, I know. I get it too. You know, like I'm trying to promote a certain bite, and oh god, it like panned over, and you could see it's for a certain part of the island, and then that guy's like, take that down with the, and I'm like, oh my god, okay. Yeah. But everybody yeah. knows pretty yeah. much the pretty cat's much. out of the bag. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty see, much. TJ. Phil and I were talking a little while ago, and that's why I left an hour before the rest of the fleet. Yep. 
you get position off of man. Yep. And I had hardcore fishermen that had no problem getting yep. down early. So we get, you know, plus I had the Fujikawa brothers at Catalina already having this stuff up, with, you know, and the receiver for me. We just pull the receiver, tank it. Yeah. Take off. If we had yeah. to go to the second one, we could shoot across. I've heard the story that you were part of the reason why the overnight boat that used to go at midnight or right after midnight all of a sudden became the 11 o'clock and then it became 10 the 10 o'clock because Mr. Kadota didn't like, you know, being in the mix of the ah, ah, ah. So he would leave before. We, did we just everybody. talk about that, That's though? Yeah, we just talked talk about, about that. that before, <laughs> exactly. But that, you know, that was the thing at Castaic. Yeah. I had to beat the Sansom brothers. Everybody else talk. I mean, they, you know, you had a whole list of skippers. Kenny Hess would go up occasionally. I mean, you know, guys that we knew. <laughs> but you know, it's the guy. If I had to leave at one, yeah, one o'clock in the morning, line. get up there, have breakfast, yeah. and get in line. Yeah. That's what yeah. we had to yeah. do to get you know, the position. Another guy that screwed everything up. I remember, you know, in the bay when we fished Twilight as a crew member, pretty much back at the docks at nine thirty, ten was right. really late. Right. Then I started fishing with Dipley down here. It's <laughs> 1 o'clock in the morning. He's on his back in the wheelhouse, you know, going, hey, are they biting yet? And I'm, dude, yeah, we're going to be at 2 o'clock in the time morning. To morning. Go. i got to work at 5 on this thing. <laughs> I, got, I got lucky with Myron. Myron was always back at the dock by midnight. <laughs> That's when we said it was midnight. Well, Myron, it was 6 o'clock yeah. to midnight. But a lot of times we were done at 10 o'clock, and we were putting in at like 3 knots while I was cutting... 400 sand bass and 400 <laughs> barracuda for yeah, our 74 yeah. people. Oh, yeah. Bad, it was just oh, bad. Full when, speed. when I was twilight and back in the Monte Carlo <laughs> days, you know, that was the, the early 90s, Tom Durr was my twilight captain. And oh, shit. Sure. 10.30, oh, 10 the engines were started. We were on our way home. Putting in. <laughs> we were on our way home. We were at the dock before midnight. He oh, had his side goodness. money in his hand, and he was off the boat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fire yeah Here you go. Good. Scrub the boat. Shut the boat off. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hey, uh, uh, Gary Bush says hello from Northern California. Right. David Rosenthal <laughs> says we spent a lot of our parents' money on 9766 <laughs> when we were teenagers. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Daniel Leano says hello, Dan and Phil. Glad to see you guys. Hey, I don't know if you've heard, but, uh, you know, the yellows have been biting in San Quentin steady for over a month. And yesterday, a buddy of mine was down on Santo Tomas, about 15 miles below Ensenada. Just breezers and bird schools up. Big, fat yellows. Nice one. Yeah, so he caught eight, I think, or six. I can't remember. Uh, beautiful fish. Does that portend anything for the... I know it's hard to say, but do you, um, do you for, like that? For, for me, for me personally in the boat, no. Because I don't have the inshore permits for down there. No, but um, I mean... Coming up? Is that fish headed this um, way? I would, I would I'd like to think so. You yeah. Know? I would like to think that the... You know, I mean, when we were fishing our rockfish in December, we still had bluefin out there. You know, it wasn't an abundance like we had during the summer, but there were still schools of bluefin flipping around the island, you know, so there's still fish. There's still fish everywhere, you know. It's just a matter of getting the right temperature and the conditions and, you know, looking at the, what's going on down below. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a good sign the start of the season. It's February, you know. Yellows, right. are, yellows are biting inshore. I mean, uh, you know, it's you only know, a good sign to there's, come. There's some of these bluefin. They don't even have to show their noses. No. I mean, if that squid's down below... Oh, they never, they never have to show up. They don't have yeah. to, show, you know, and and so, and if the squid is like what I thought it would be, you know, during the winter time, the volume of it is still out there. They're not going anywhere. No. They, I mean, we always said, oh yeah, they go across Japan, come back. Oh, come on, you got candy right there. That's like, no, why I, would I drive? I, from? I, I think they're kind of, you know, hanging out between yeah. the islands and out to the outer banks, and that's why we, they might we've, go down we've been to exactly and come back yeah. around, do a little loop and loop. Exactly, they don't exactly. Yeah, we, yeah. we saw yeah. them during the season. Like I say, it's like all of a sudden they were in between the islands, and all of a sudden they're off the west end of the islands, and all of a sudden they're back over here off the east end of the island, and they're just chasing the food, you know. And the food isn't going anywhere; it's, it's just kind of milling anywhere. around exactly. in one big circle out there. So exactly, great discussion. So, so hang on, I'm guys. Loving you, DJ and Will and Danny. Great stuff. So. That looks good. Now, uh, Gary Bush, who's up there in Northern California, says, and it's hard, I know, to project in the future, but what do you think about Bluefin for May? I'll be on the show gun. Uh, just given what you're saying now, TJ. Uh, There's always a chance at it. Yeah. May, May for me personally, I don't like May. May's always been a bad weather month for me. Windy? Um, windy, swell, rainy conditions. I mean, it's May's always been a tough month for me personally. Yeah. Um, you know, trying to fish the islands, not so much the tuna, because the tuna... Don't really show up here in May. You know, we still have our colder conditions up here in May. But, you know, it, the way things have been, it's been warmer. So there is a chance. And say presumably, single. he's on the show. He's on the I'd show. Say, he's, he's, got he's, five, he's, say he's got a 60, 60 to 70% chance. Yeah. Because yeah. that stuff normally, 
normally mid-April is when I think the Queen and the new Luann and those guys start looking and it seems to pick up and it seems to bite really good in the dark for those oh, guys yeah. in May. Yeah. The Supreme starting in March. He's yep. going to start yeah. running three-day yeah. trips down yeah. there. Yeah, but it's yeah. Th- there's there's going to be, if there's fish within three or four-day range, He's got a good uh, he's, shot. He's at got it. a good shot at it because there's going to be the info and there's going to be the dope out there for those guys because they don't want to sit at the dock till June anymore. Those guys no. want to run, and you see it with the Queen, the New Luann, all those guys push every year a little bit earlier. Now that you know, they, they want to make money. It's not the old days of let's run June until September and sit at the dock. You know the whole thing too is if you're getting the coverage, we get the boats out there. It's good for all of us. Yes, because yeah. it's easy to miss. But when you're working with all the guys, you know, you focus in on it, that, you know, it gets everything, gets the ball rolling a lot sooner. Yeah. That's and always a good thing. This year, it's going to be a little crazy. We're in an El Nino right now that is going to transition into a La Nina here. Did you say El Nino last year? Uh, we were still under the influence of it, and it's we're still under it right now. That's why we're getting all this rain. Yeah, we're still, we're, we're still drinking. a little bit warmer so, than So next normal. year, it shouldn't rain on us, is what you're saying. Well, we're going to go into a La Nina, winter so... Time. I, it's it's a weird year because you got warm water going to cold water. So, oh my God, those long fins are coming, Danny. Right? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I couldn't resist, DJ. Yeah, I had yeah, to bring yeah. it up. We catch a couple every year. Yeah, yeah, we did. We got we some. We got a few, we last, year. few last year. We technically got out of our. Yeah, I, I guess you would call it a bet, but we said, yeah, they, we get a few. Yeah. Well, speaking yeah. of Mr. Doom and Gloom on Albacore, Tom Dura, I was talking to him last night. <laughs> we'll never see him again. You gotta go to uh, Oregon to catch those. Never, they'll never be back. Never, never. never. Yeah, well, yeah. One thing I know, well, for, and you guys all know from running boats, we never say never. Yeah, well, in his, in, <laughs> maybe in his lifetime, you never say we're, never. We're nearing the end of uh, the sophistication there, and so. <laughs> what are you talking about? His lifetime, like it might be another couple. Well, of weeks he's saying, yeah, you, know, you know, he's he's saying they're never gonna be here, so maybe he's projecting. The rest of his life for a couple you know? weeks. More. I, I'm still hoping in the next, you know, five to ten years when I'm still doing this that they they come oh, yeah. back around. Yeah. So. I just learned never to say never. No, that, that's, that's, that's like, that's absolutely. Like the guy, hey, you think this lure work? I don't know. Try it. Throw it when out. I say there. next that's cast. Never going to work. The next guaranteed. cast is guaranteed to bite. Just, I agree. You put your head down. I and agree. Bite. And then he goes, "Yeah, huh, that guy doesn't know anything." <laughs> yeah, well, now you got these freaking guys taking crescent wrenches and putting treble hooks on it, tossing it's, it out and hanging fish right. It works. It works. So it, weird, works. Right? Yeah, it works. It works. Yeah. It yeah. works. I've seen swim baits yeah. with treble hooks. Remember, remember the first them. spoon jig, which was actually a, real a spoon. spoon. Yeah. With a treble hook. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, it's just getting it down there. I think a guy on one trip tried a piece of rebar, but the problem he had with it is he had the the keychains, foot rings, and they didn't hold up to like the 100 pound fish. <laughs> <and straight down. laughs> So he figured he had to try harder, but it was a piece of rebarb that he yeah. dropped down and got oh, bit yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, Might as well ask you guys this question. I'm going to ask all three of you guys. Color on jigs, does it matter? Fast. <laughs> Color yeah. fast. Color fast. <laughs> DJ, does it matter? I don't think it really matters if it's biting. I mean, there, there are jigs that, you know, certain days are going to work better than others. There's days, like I say, when it's overcast, the... Different colors are going to work better than others, but it what, what, still what comes... What kind of jigs are we talking about? Let's, are we talking about deep dropping jigs, like no, no, bluefin no. or we'll, surface we'll, jigs? We'll divide it. Jigs? We'll divide it. So let's talk Probably. 80, 45. Yeah. There's start. definitely a color. Yeah. Definitely oh, yeah. Color. yeah. Definitely yeah. color in that. Well, There's I think color. on color the surface you, surface, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get the light effect in the color yeah. and stuff, too. All yeah. right. So but, you mentioned overcast days. What colors do you want on overcast days? Um, I personally like the darker colors on overcast days. I personally do. Okay, now what's that stupid lead thing, lead with a hook? What's that called? What do they call that jig? Oh, yeah. yeah the yeah. diamond jig? No, no, no. no it's just, talking about a you take a sanger. torpedo at 8 or 12 on Eddie bomb? Yeah. yeah. So I did that. Put a big treble hook, you know, a 4X to handle some of the big fish. I, I stinking got bit on it. Mm-hmm. I dumped the fish. I but, fast. Yeah. But I, I got bit on it. I yeah. couldn't believe it. This yeah. year or last year? You know, last year. Yeah. 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 Guys, we have, some, my, we have some breaking news here. It's under. wide open Albuquerque at Ralph's and Albertsons. Yeah. They're back. Ah, oh, there we go. There, there you go. Mates. They're on the that. spot, huh? What, 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 what's the price? Get the poll. I don't know. For the package. <laughs> Emmanuel, <laughs> Emmanuel Navedo saying hi from Florida. Emmanuel, great to have you with us. All right, so on a sunny day, what color jig are we throwing? What do you guys like? Sunny? I, I tend to go with like the, 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 the baby. Baby, 
crap color, single <laughs> crap color, you know, white and that yucky green, or like a mint and white. Mint and white for me. Uh, blue and white's always good. Scrambled eggs always good. Surface jig. I'm like TJ, dark day. I want something with yeah. a white belly, but a darker black and white. Back, yeah. Bur dark purple, white kind of deal. Something, you know, they can give them a good contrast looking yeah. up where they yeah. can see. Yeah, I agree. jigs, when do you use those? When barracuda are around. <laughs> or, 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 they're or, just, or anything's chewing. If they're yeah. just chewing wide open, yeah. it's just skip the jig. flash and they're on even it. On the, even on the uh, the bluefin, if they're foaming, you know? Oh, yeah. Nice yeah. shiner right in the middle because yep. when they're foaming, they're not really biting anyways. Matter. But, yeah. you know, they're just, you know, you get the right, yeah. you get the right, let, you get the right shiny item in there that, you know, yeah. they'll jump on it. All right. Uh, Daniel says, my first mm -hmm. trip on the El Dorado week. Limit it out on bluefin. It's going to make you feel great, TJ. Gary Bush, bluefin at night. Uh, maybe talking about colors at night. Well, is that important then? Fast. Fast. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you got to uh, turn it's, the handle fast. Got to drop turn it fast. fast get it moving drop. fast. Colors irrelevant. Color is totally irrelevant. Yeah. So some of the important things are fast and depth. Yep. Yes. Right? You're listening. Yep. That's where the color coded yeah. line comes yeah. in, right? Yeah, make sure you have it marked. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. that yeah. important? Yeah, yeah well, of course. Because, I mean, what we're doing, when you get on the spot, you're metering, and yeah. they're going to tell you it's at, where's 300 it's feet? at, you know. Where's 300 yeah. feet? You yeah, know. right. Or fathoms. So also yeah. get ready to convert into yeah. fathoms. So you're talking yeah. 60 feet, as you, you know. Yeah. So I have my. It's, it's, you yeah. either got to have a heavy enough jig to go fast, to get it down there fast, to drop through those fish and come back up, or you got to be able to drop it fast and come back fast. If you can't do one or the other, you know, do one. If you can't wind it quick, drop it quick. Yeah, that's for it's, sure. It's got to yeah. go. And when it stops or it feels funny, put it in gear and turn the Grind. hand. Grind. Yeah. And when TJ says drop, you want to drop you it immediately. Drop. Yeah. 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 You don't want to be going to get your rod. When, the, captain, when the captain, myself or any captain, when they're like, okay, guys, let them go. You don't want to be you wanna... grabbing your hook off your, you want to be at the rail with your, with your stuff ready to go. And when, you know, when you hear the captain say, let it go, that school is under the boat. Let them go, you know, drop it down. I mean, if you're if you're waiting for everybody to get out of your way, you're not going to get them. Yeah, I watched Danny on our uh, trip on board the Freedom. Man, you were on it whenever. You were in the water first all the time. You were observing all the time, changing up your game. It was great watching the man here. <laughs> well, it had pressure. Look at <laughs> 30 other captains, man. Well, that, was the captain's, <laughs> that was the captain's trip, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Conklins, yeah. all the guys that we oh, fished yeah, with back yeah, in the yeah, day, you know. You, oh yeah. You don't want to be showing up. Yeah, yet. no, no. You you better be on your. You better have your A game going. <laughs> hey, know. Danny, you were talking to me, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if the boys know this or not, but Cherokee Geisha and the El Dorado. What about that? Well, the sister ship holds. The only difference yeah. is the flare on the Cherokee, because yep. well, it was, it was meant for coming uphill. It was a long range boat, you know. Lee Palms. House a little bit different. Yeah, house. Yeah. And it actually had a stateroom, in the, and we gutted that and made a big galley out of it. Was know? that the Chubasco? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is Chubasco. But same hole, but the difference is the flare. Yeah. You know, and the oldest comes back yeah, in. Ours, our, ours cuts back like yeah. a drake. Like so a drake, yeah. Ours, ours flare out the same, but instead and of it keeps coming back. all the way up to the cap rail on the out, ours actually comes up to, to the rub rail at that point, and it cuts back in. So we've got about a 12 to 14-inch um, cut back towards the um, the bulwarks. So in our bulwarks are actual vertical, you know, whereas the Cherokee Geisha's still the got glory. the angle. The old, the old glory. The old glory. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. The thing glory. Was. It's the old glory old now. Glory. Chabasco to start. Yeah. Chabasco. Yeah. Chabasco. Then, we, then we named it Cherokee Geisha. Then. Now it's old with glory. Butch. Yeah. 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 I fish with Butch yeah. a lot on yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Um, and so what is the, the, those two differences you pointed out between the old glory and the Eldorado? What is the difference in the ride or not much. Oh, okay. Not much. The the yeah. holes are both uh, double plank Honduras mahogany. Um, yeah. They're bulletproof. They're about two Dittmar's. and a half inches thick. They're made by Dittmar um, back in '67 uh, down there in Costa Mesa. Um, I, I think the uh, Cherokee does have more of this though because of I the think overhang. He's got a little more, I think he's got a little more weight on the, on the upper deck. Yeah. Because his on the, his, uh, on the house. his his wheelhouse actually goes about a foot to 14 inches on each side over the deck, whereas mine is on the El Dorado. It's all streamlined yeah. straight yeah. up. Yeah. So I think he's got a little bit more top heavy, and he's got uh, uh, rafts. He's got inflatable rafts up there too. So he's got yeah. a little more top end. Yeah. So he's got a little bit more uh, snap and a roll mm -hmm. than I've got. When's your season gonna start? When are you guys gonna start running? Uh, I'm hoping. Uh, I'm hoping to March. I'm hoping to be online doing something in March. Um, like I say, we've we've got our painting done that we're gonna do. We're deck repairing right now. Uh, we've made our modifications in the galley. 
Um, you know, we've got to fine tune a couple of things. We've got some engine work still to do with John Deere, but that's a whole sore subject in another matter. But, um, <laughs> you know, we're uh, we're hoping to be online. Like I say, we're, we're trying to wrap it up. we got weather coming in in the next couple of days, so we're going to be, you know, shutting down for a few more days. But, uh, you know, like I say, we're uh, we're seeing the end of the end of the tunnel. So, you know, the money's gone. We're already out of money. So, <laughs> that's that's. Yeah. That's anytime you mention the word boat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You know. Which thousand so, you were that's right. So, yeah. <laughs> that's so I right. say we're uh, we've we've talked to a few people. We're talking about doing uh, an offshore exploratory kind of you know take the boat out for a couple days. Um, so we're trying to put that together, but everyone's waiting on me to give them the the date as to okay we're going you know. But I still got a few more things to wrap up, and um, like I say, I'm I'm kind of hoping March first to have a, a somewhat of a schedule going. What modifications did you make in the galley? Uh, we took the oven that used to be in the back corner. We moved it out. We put in another refrigerator so we can have some more refrigeration for our multi-days. Um, we added an oven that is uh, um, an all-in-one oven. It's now a convection oven, an oven, a rotisserie, and an air fryer all in one, plus a, a the wow. cooktop. So we're hoping to beef up our, uh, our galley production and better meals and some different things coming out of there. Um, so we got that all done. Um, we went to help our cook out. We actually installed a dishwasher on the boat now, so our cook will have a little bit wow. you know, easier, easier life. It's um, kind of cool, you know. Yeah. Cha like changing out, uh, yeah. you know, changing yeah. out our utensils and upgrading the plates, and you know, just the little things that'll make it, you know, more of a better experience. Feel you know, a lot, almost like long. Yeah, yeah. I way, mean, right? we, we already have the we already have the galley set up where it looks like a '50s diner with the red and black and the stainless oh, steel. Oh, cool. that's you know? awesome. And so we you know we're we're just trying to. Upgrade some modifications that we've overlooked over the past few years and get it cleaned back up and dialed back in. So. You know, it's, it's so different because, you know, I, I can remember as day trips, you had all disposable stuff. Yeah. But then you end up with these huge plastic bags yeah. of garbage, yeah. right? Where, I mean, what you're talking about yeah. is the way Well, our, our yeah, problem now is that we, yeah. you know, I came from, you know, under Mike Redlew and, you know, same as you. Um, you know, with, with what we learned over the years, the bathrooms have to be clean and the boat doesn't smell like a fishing boat and take care of the passengers, oh, yeah. you know, and then we got into the deal of give them a plate, you know, because number one, it, a plate is a much better, you know, there's, you know, a burrito, okay, yeah, it's a sandwich wrap out, you go, but if you're going to get a, a breakfast, we'll serve them on a plate, you know, yeah. because yeah. the paper plate, number one, when you cut it, it you know, breaks. they cut, they leak through, you right. know, it, it's right. just... It's kind of just cheesy, you know. And you, you got trash again, You know, too. and then you got more trash, yeah. and you're trying to compile it. But sure. now, everything's expensive. So now you start buying plastic utensils. You start buying paper products. And in this state, you go broke. Yeah. You go broke quick. Yeah, you're right. So we Better started, have a dishwasher. We started looking at our at our receipts, and you know what? It's it's cheaper to buy brand new plates, and it's cheaper to buy brand new bowls, and a little bit of Dawn soap, and, you know, you got to put a little effort you're just, into it. Or you're doing it. I mean, you're just going more... I guess long range. I yeah, mean, you know, I yeah. mean, and they set the bar years ago with yep. all that now. Yep. And, you know, it just become a, a standard now. Yep. But I mean, if you look at how it's been elevated over the years, I mean, come on, oh, yeah. we remember way back what we thought was luxurious yeah. is now. Oh, yeah, it's not, it's it's nothing, it's not even close. You know, I mean, yeah, we're getting full on sushi bars, yeah. the whole deal, and guys are. I mean, that's if yeah. if you got that capacity and capability, man. The yeah. word goes around quick. Yeah, well, yeah, for a so while there, cool. a few years back, you know, I want to say in the 14, 15, 16 um, years, um, I actually had a gourmet chef on the boat. And Amy, I mean, there was no, you, you couldn't go in, in there and order a breakfast burrito. She didn't have a breakfast burrito. Oh, she had some awesome. gourmet something or other. Wow. And that's she had awesome. a menu. It was like, here was my menu, and this is what you can have off my menu. And it was just <laughs> kind of like, um, I don't want that. I want, I want a breakfast. I want a breakfast. And I'm not making those. I'm a making, burrito so I can I'm take making, it to the rail. Yeah, you, she's you, all, I'm making Eggs Benedict today, and it's just like, I guess we're having Eggs Benedict, you know? And, and, Way ahead you know, of your time. It, it, it worked awesome. good, yeah. but people yeah. people in the open party sense where we were still with the boat didn't appreciate it. You, you know? know what's funny is when you're on the long-range boat, and they're like, it's Eggs Benedict, it's this, it's that, it's this, and it's like, yeah, we're gonna make breakfast burritos today, and like the enthusiasm, like breakfast burritos, this is awesome. <laughs> Got a breakfast burrito, it's just, it's just you you lose that little bit, and people, yeah, yeah, you know, it's like a greasy cheeseburger. Everybody wants a boat yeah, burger, exactly. You know, it's like, can I just get exactly. a boat burger? With all the, yeah. the stuff on it, it's especially just, as older yeah. guys. I mean, because you get those things. flashbacks, man. Yeah, you know, it brings you back. Yeah. yeah, the gourmet stuff's awesome, but at the same time, you want to keep things. Yeah, and and, and like I say, and for us on the Eldo, you know, it's like with Brian, you know, we, it might be ribeye steak dinner night, 
you know, but the guy doesn't want to eat a steak dinner. So they'll be like, hey, man, can, can you make me a double cheeseburger? And Brian's answer to that is always, yeah, but you got to wait till I get these steaks off the grill. You know, so he'll serve everybody whatever he's got cooking at the time. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you'll see two big patties come out and go out on the grill, and here come out the onions. And, you know, all of a sudden, you got a double cheeseburger grill onions. And, you know, and then it's like, oh, back to ribeye steaks because, you know, the next guy wants a steak again. So so we try to accommodate, you yeah. know, and, and yeah. give, give the guys what they want, you know. TJ, you mentioned a moment ago that uh, you do live updates from the boat. How do people find those live updates? Where do, um, they, where so, do they find you? So I'm on social media, on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, the Western Outdoor News that's going to be coming out is going to have the QR codes in the Western Outdoor News to where you can actually link in and, and subscribe to our page. But it's basically Eldorado Sport Fishing um, on, on Instagram and also on Facebook. You know, and like I say, my, my updates go on both of them, you know. Um, people are telling me I need a TikTok, but I'm, uh, I'm good with just the two. Uh, Instagram and Facebook work for me. Um, you know, I don't need another social media platform because I'm not only the guy doing the camera work, I'm also the guy bagging fish and helping down on the deck. So yeah, I don't need any more jobs. <laughs> I hear you, man. I, I'm on too many of those as it is right now. Part of the reason why I can't grow any hair back, man. <laughs> I'm done. Hey, Raymond Pacheco says the ugliest jig with no paint gets bit. And yeah. we've all seen that. Oh, right? that's true. It's, yeah. it, it's gotten bit so much it doesn't even have any paint anymore. Yeah, so, but it probably swims good. But it, yeah, yeah. It's you know. got the swim action to it. <laughs> Raymond it says it. he's gone back to halibut fishing. One of the best guys he knew was Jimmy Valdez. And he says fish in paradise, Jimbo. Miss you down here. Any of you guys know Jimmy Valdez? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Was he a good fisherman? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Uh, Luis Flores says, any recommendations or tips for people wanting to try a multi-day trip? Go fishing. So, so they're, they're going, they want to graduate from the three-quarter day boat or an overnight boat and go to multi-day. I, I Absolutely. Won't. Just go. Yeah, don't be fearful, right? Yeah. Yeah. Go. If pick, you have a good crew. Pick a boat and go. Yeah. So, you and know. you don't have to go crazy no, with your you tackle. Just, just get out there but and go. Whatever you need, you, bring on you a do quarter need. Day boat, yep. Bring, but yeah. you might, you might have to. You might have to have a heavy might rod. Have a, you, yeah. Try to get a bigger rod if the bluefin are around. You're yeah. fishing bluefin. Yeah. You want to find a, a hundred pound stick. Yep. Like you don't yeah. need. You didn't need those years and years ago when I went overnight fishing. The heaviest thing you needed was forty pounds. But yeah. It's like yeah. a thirty, a sixty, and a hundred pound rod. You can pretty much do everything on an overnight boat if you're tuna fishing. Yep. If yeah, you're fishing true. the islands, bring your three quarter day stuff. It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Don't even don't even stress on it. Just go fishing. Your best bet, you know, pick up the phone, call the landing, let them know what boat you're going on. They're going to have your tackle recommendations. You know, I I know for us, like at the at Long Beach, you know, we we tell the office this is what we're doing. This is what you need to tell people. You know, that way they can call in and get a tackle update as to what's going on. Most of the boats now, you know, and most of the captains, we're on social media telling you know, hey, this is what you should be bringing. This is what you should be fishing with. So the information's out there. You just got to, like I say, pay attention to it and listen to what you're being told, you know. Subscribe to TJ's Instagram. He'll let you yeah. know. Yeah. Come well, you know, the, and the parameters, too. Thanks to Spectra. Thanks to Russ Iser. Thank you, Russ. Hmm. Everything's it's smaller. Smaller, but you could change your top shots. You could, yep. And your you diversity can. from going from one line to the next yep. is so much easier. Oh, All yeah, you got to do is splice in. 15, 20. Splice in 20 some floral yeah, or need, whatever. You don't need yeah. six reels or six no, different and that, I mean, I, I still bring <laughs> I still bring that because I want to be competitive. I, I just don't want that one piece it's, missing. It's that competitive thing. You but just want to grab well, the That's the way it is. You know I have come, them. Yeah. You know if you come without it, you're just going to yeah. get a bunch of shit. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, do you guys agree with me? I tell people, like, if they don't know what they're doing, find a crew member right away and say, hey, I really don't know. Can yes. you help me yes. out? Right? Yes. Rather than best. pretending yeah. like yeah. you know what you're doing. That's the best thing to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, when we're on the boats, you know, our, our job is to catch fish. Our job is to make you enjoy your fishing experience. If you're not catching fish and you're not enjoying yourself, you know, you're most likely not going to want to come back. And if we don't attend to you and don't show you, like, like for us, we have no problem tying your hook, but we'll show you how to tie your hook. You know, we'll show you how to select a bait. We'll show you how to hook that bait. You know, and hopefully by the end of the trip, you're doing it on your own. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. you're not doing it on your own, guess what? We'll continue to do it for you. You know, you might have to wait a minute because, you know, we're, we're, you know, a crew of six with 30 passengers on the boat. But, you know, we will do our best to attend and help you. But, yeah, if the, the guy that's not opening his mouth asking for help is the guy that's not going to get help. Well, the, the thing, even prior to a trip, though, I mean, if you're really seriously 
you know, going to get into the sport. It's like any other sport. You got to practice. Yep. So practice tying the knots. Talk to the captains. Talk to your tackle shops. They're going to key you on on the best knots for specific baits too. You know, yep. if it's a chovy, it's going to be a smaller knot. You're going to probably want, you know, fluorocarbon. I mean, well, but thing about, you talk thing about to it now guys. though is everything's so refined tackle wise. If you're going to fish a chovy, you got ring hooks that are small now. They give that momentum where you don't have to tie a loop knot. You've got a small <laughs> ring. Thank Unbelievable. God. Thank I God. I mean, it's little things like that that people don't understand. <laughs> that that ring gamakatsu that awesome. I that I pulled off on all the, the captains on their the cap. You know, I I doubt that. All those old guys ever weighed them, but it's 350 milligrams, and that's including the ring. Wow. But the problem is, I didn't expect to hook those fish that I hooked, so I ended up straightening them out. <laughs> you know, but you, but then you that's, scale up, you scale yeah, you up, go up yeah. the next you scale hook, up. But, but sometimes I guarantee that you, ring hook is awesome. that little ringed hook on a on a you know with a chovy for albacore or, or a light line bluefin, touchy bluefin, Perfect. you kill them. Yes, makes a huge difference. Yes. you know, and that's something because standard. A standard number four mustad weighs 450 milligrams. Well, the number four gamakatsu with a ring is 350. So, you know, you and I can't feel that difference, but I guarantee you that chovy can. can. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So there's little like things that make the right a difference. One. You don't want the beat up one. You want That's that it. one. That's it. You know, it's, it's, it comes with learning yes. and time on the water. Everything to do with everything from that to your fluorocarbon to your not, I mean, everything. You have to, yeah. you have to, you have to practice, guys. Yeah. It's like anything else, any other sport you do. Yep, can't catch Practice. The I don't even know if they sell clothespins anymore. <laughs> I was just going to say, <laughs> we used to use clothespins. Cast in the park with a bait. <coughs> yeah. I didn't do that with but it was you know, practice. Pass, you got it. I used, I used to, master with a clothespin. I yeah. used to be at El Dorado yeah. Park. You know, Try to get that momentum. Out there with, <laughs> get my, sinker, out there with my sinker. And then you hear, snap. Crap, <laughs> got to go get my sinker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've oh, all yeah. been there. Hey, guys, great discussion tonight. Lots of questions. Hit that like button. Lots of people watching. Dan Smith worked on the Super Saners, and he said, we had great chefs, the best, but we were out for three months at a time. Now the long-range sporties have the same caliber of chefs. I had no idea. I thought it would be really hardcore on the Saners, so I'm surprised to learn. I guess they wanted to make sure everybody yeah, was eating. Oh, months. yeah. Wanted, yeah, right. You want oh, yeah. Them. You want food. Yeah. 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 They work yeah. hard. You got to feed them. Absolutely. Steve Bermuda says, TJ, does your crew prefer on a dropper loop to attach the hook with a knot or run it or run through the loop, run the loop through the eye of the hook and wrap it around for easy rigging in case of tangles? Ooh, that's, that's a... That's a that's a user. So yeah, I, I I don't like taking sinkers off because it makes it even more of a mess to untangle somebody. But then you get crew members that think it's easier to take the sinkers off than it is the other way. But if you've if you've worked the old days when we did fifteen hook rock cod trips, <laughs> you never pulled the sinker up. You left everything no. dangling over the side, and you just pulled the line up the bottom. Yeah, you, you let gravity the bottom, gravity you would work apart. it. Yeah. And the new yeah. thing is, well, we're going to tie a sinker in the bottom and we're going to do, well, that just makes more stuff for everything to catch on to and just makes a bigger mess. And I, yeah. don't, I don't like it, but there's there's guys that like to yeah. do it that I, way. I, I prefer it, you know, to be tied, you know. I prefer it to be tied, not, not yeah, looped through. And, yeah. you know, and, and like you said, you know, when you're you're fishing 30 people and they're tangled, you know, and even even fishing these big bluefin, you know, I mean, you get tangled up, it's... You know, you, you don't want to be taking stuff off. It makes it it makes it even worse because the lines ball up and yeah, you know, especially with specter now. You just can't cut it and let it go. <laughs> you know, that was that was the mindset long you know ten years yeah. ago was yeah. cut it. Well, then all of a sudden you get down to the connection, and I've been there with him back in the day. Get down to the connection, you got this hundred pound fish that's thirty feet away from the boat, and we can't do anything about it because he's right there. And everything's balled up at the end of the rod on a knot. We're trying to figure out how to cut the thing off so we can get to it. And then the fish swims away or breaks off. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they're probably going, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. So, yeah, you learn not, don't cut. Yeah. Don't cut because it just slides. It balls yeah, the, up. The, the, old, right. the old school That's the old right. school days was cut me out and I'll go to retire. Yeah, mono slipped now, off. Mono now the new, away. It's different. Yeah. yeah now the it's new different. line is, you know, mono you spectra. got your braid or your spectra or your... You know, whatever the, you got the out there. The wind can tie a knot in the Spectre that we can't untie, but we can't tie knots in Spectre that hold. Yeah. We'll figure that one yeah. out. <laughs> or, or as soon as, yeah, as soon as, you, as soon as you cut it, it ties in such a knot that, thanks. 
All right, boys, yep. uh, hit that like button. More questions coming in. Steve Bermudez also says, rest in peace, Jimmy Valdez. Luis Flores, do boats usually have provide trolling gear? Do they normally provide it? There's not a whole lot of trolling that goes on it's, anymore, is there? There's a lot of trolling. Yeah. There's just not a lot of catching anymore. It's, right. it's not you like know? it used to be. Um, you know, when the Dorado were biting, we were getting bit on the troll on the Dorado. Yeah. You know, a few years back. Yeah. Um, but... As as far as like trolling and you know the old school oh you got to finish throw some bait shut down on the slide and here you go yeah it's not really going on anymore because I you tell me you know better than me the sonars that you have you see the fish you don't have to wait for that four way jig strike now and like hey start throwing it man we. Yeah. You see them, man. You're you're gonna shut down on them before yeah, you get we're bit. Yeah, we're we're turning already and, and stopping before the jigs get bit. You know, and, and getting we're getting bit on the bait fish, which is getting the schools to the boat a lot. Uh, it seems more more accurately and more um, in timely fashion. You know, than the old school of oh, let's drag around, drag around, drag around. I don't, and, I don't think we caught a whole know. lot of bluefin trolling back in the day either. No, no, no. So it's like it was. But we didn't, almost, have, we didn't have almost, the bluefin really back then. No, never. that's the yeah. whole thing. So we're not yeah. we're not fishing a whole lot of yellowfin like we did before that are yeah. eager to jump on yeah. the jigs. We're not fishing the albacore. We're not fishing albacore, and they all swam up shallower when you when you metered them. You saw them a lot shallower, and it's hard to get these fish that are swimming down you know 150 200 feet down. To come up, and even when you see them on the sonar, they they run away at Mach five half the time. So how are you going to troll over the top of them? You know, it it's so weird because we never even entertained the thought of of dragging a a jig for a bluefin. I remember the only one I ever got was on my way out to sixty, and we just full boring it. You know, it's like and the, and that was and that was a fluke, and it was a small, you know, like a fifteen pounder. But you know, last year during the middle of the day. And we were out there between Santa Barbara and, and uh, Clemente. We nailed a, a 174 on a Halco going eight knots, yeah, seven yeah. knots, way back. Which is, which is, yeah, yeah which is unbelievable. So far back but what's there. what's that other one? The Mad Mac. The Mad, the Mad Mac. Mac. Okay, now that one, unless you're in a, a yacht, that doesn't or, work on a sport yeah, boat. Yeah, it doesn't. It, work. it won't work because you got to go too fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it just depends on you know what type of platform you're on. You and know. Sam was showing me one over there at Island Fishing Tackle. The, is it the Mad Scad? It's, it's you control that faster, like 18 knots even. You know, faster is it, is than it still that. a, is that one still from a... Yeah, it is. Yeah. I can't think of who makes the um, Mad Mad. I can't there. either, but... Yeah. I, yeah trust me, I, yeah. I'm sure you guys are the same way. I don't want to go to the same fuel bank after dragging those things around yeah, at 18, well, you know, you so, know. So when you start talking about those, I don't even look because <laughs> right. I'm not doing 18 knots. Yeah, well, that's just exactly, no point, you know? exactly. But that, that Halco at that, the 7, 8 knots yeah. to get a 174, that's yeah. the first time I've ever seen, you know, and before. The shallow, the shallow lipped ones that are like right below the surface, but they get those things so far back there. Yeah, yeah but you know, who would ever thought, you know, I would say, forget it, I'd never Troll well, who, for a bluefin, well, but you see when you who go, would have ever thought that you're wow. gonna go out in the middle of the night, stop your boat, turn on your lights, and drop <laughs> down 300 feet? You know, there's a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, stay up all night. You know, that's real easy on the crew, I, I, isn't I, it? I, I, I took you know? a, I took a hiatus in in 2017. I got off the Aldo and went and did some other stuff to do the family thing. But once again, you know, I've had two hiatuses in my career, and I left right as this whole bluefin, big bluefin bite started. I left. And I came back in 22, and all of a sudden I'm getting this, hey, we have to go out behind uh, Catalina, and we're going to start fishing at 2 in the morning. We're going to do what? <laughs> Are you yeah. out of your window? No, I sleep Basically, at the two whole in the crew's morning. up, too, right? Uh, you know? it, it, it takes a t and now, nowadays, oh. you know, it, it takes two good guys to be consistent because you have to have a nighttime guy that wants to fish just as hard as a daytime guy does. And if you don't, it puts way too much stress on that one guy to try to work 19 hours a day and run the boat and be productive. And after like four or five, you're, you're just a zombie. It's, you just don't even it's you're, brutal. You're over it. Yeah. It's brutal. Yeah. My it's hats tough. off to you guys yeah. because, I mean, I just, I watch and I just, I mean, it, you know, well, I, mean, I just go, th hey, thank poor you stars guys. You're out. Exactly. <laughs> I've been retired for a while from the, it, it you know. makes it, But it makes you appreciate what you have when you have that. Oh, yeah. No. You they, know, they're, well, the days all, of being a bus driver are over. No. You know, no, you can't no. you can't get your license and no. want to be the bus driver that drives from point A to point B because that fishery is gone. Work. So I just want to remind consumers, now that I'm on the other side of it, make sure you take care of your crews because let me tell you something, they are working their behinds off. And you know, it's not like they said, when I was running boats, I would sleep and 
you know, I'd have them get up the minute, you know, and uh, the minute we start dropping the sound dome in, probably an hour before we get out to the area, you know, I'd get up, but we'd get a little sleep. Not a lot, but we'd get a little sleep. Yep. Now they don't get any sleep. So keep that in mind when it comes time, when you get back to the dock, take care of your crew. Take care of them. They're working their behinds off, guys. That is a great point. Man, I mean, you guys have touched on it, but this is brutal on the crews, man. You just... And then, you know, you, you get some guys that are going to sleep, but if you get into a wide open bite, everybody's got to get up. Oh, yeah. 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 Get up. yeah. Right? Everybody's up. Everybody's up. Yeah. You know, you, know, you kind of you kind of want that. Even, right. Know, as bad as it sounds, yeah, I want everybody, you know, if we can if we can catch, if we got 33 guys, I want to catch 66 feet yeah. before. Get it done. Before <laughs> 7 a.m. so we can turn around and go the other way or whatever. Exactly. We can do. Over it. Pressure's off. Yeah. <laughs> done. Winner. <We're... laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. Hey, Blue Sky says, I was on TJ's boat last summer. Nice shower. You got a nice shower on there? Yeah, we do. Nice we showers. do. I like yeah. that. So we uh, we revamped the bathrooms a couple times uh, over the last few years. Um, our bathrooms, the toilets used to be the old school round bowl with constantly flowing water through them that we've had on boats for decades. Forever, you know? yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I finally revamped it a few years back and put a one-piece residential household toilet in, um, which worked really well, but it was still connected to our salt water. So we constantly had problems with the ball cocks filling uh, with little muscles and plugging up, and you know now we have no flushing, and so you're in there doing repairs while you're trying to fish. And so we changed that out. Um, we went to a new design of the of the one-piece toilet. We switched it over to fresh water. So it's just like your house. Now it doesn't actually plug up. I ended up adding a water maker to the boat. And by making these changes, we moved the toilets out of the little um, little side closet where it was kind of claustrophobic to be in. We brought it out by our shower area so there's more room. So when you sit down, you actually have a little bit more breathing room while you're there. And then our showers were revamped. We turned the showers to where um, you're no longer um, sideways, you're now forward and aft, which is, you know, much better for me personally. Um, and we redid the bathroom with vinyl uh, tile. Um, so it's uh, wow. it's uh, like a wow. marble a marble flooring print that we actually used on the walls. And, you know, it's, uh, well, I awesome. get I get compliments yeah. out of a lot of people going, this is nicer than my bathroom at home. And <laughs> even uh, even my partner's wife, Mr. Mr. Fukuto's wife, Erin, um, she's walked on the boat a couple of times. This is nicer than my house. And so, Mr. Well, Fukuda, Steve, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fukuda had to step up a little well, he bit. To, he huh? had to remodel the house. <laughs> he finally had to remodel the house because I was making the boat look better than the, <laughs> the home front. So that is awesome. Um, great show, says Isaac. He says, "Good evening, gentlemen." David Rosenthal. <laughs> Question to all of you guys: What are your thoughts on releasing calicos? Do you guys keep or release? Both. Yeah. Both. Both. Uh, bigger ones, I tend to want to release, but there's times and places to keep them. You know, I think I took you fishing this summer. We had a decent bite on the bigger ones. Yeah, but, really good. But the only thing is, we weren't catching a lot of the bigger ones. We were hooking a lot of the bigger ones, but we were releasing a lot of them back before we ever put them on the boat. But it was fun fishing. But yeah, that, that age class and, you know, it the five fish per person, I think, is huge now. Uh, it, it lends itself more to not having to catch ten catch five and catch three or four i mean you got a nice little little bag of calicos to it's, home. it's a quality fish folks. Yeah. and to be honest i i am the same way i don't i'm not big on eating a big one no nope. let that's it go that's a breeder you can't that's a, a breeder let it go that's a good topic. i'd rather have something yeah. that's like this yeah. you know two, i mean that two that's two that's calicos beautiful two, play two, you know not, not barely legal but you know 14 15 inch you know calicos and you know two to three of those and i'm good you know yeah. i like catching them but you know, I don't, I don't want to overfish it, and I don't need more than that. I mean, two to three, just so I can have a, a dinner, you know, for me and maybe my daughter. And and it's amazing yeah. how our mentality's changed because I, you know, yeah, you I, know. I look back, back <laughs> when we all. fished, <laughs> yeah. and I, it's shameful. <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm not kidding. It's shameful what we, yeah. you know, the numbers that we did. Yeah. Gummy yeah. sack, you know, now it's, yep. yeah. yeah. Take what you can use and exactly. consume opposed exactly. to load the boat. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what constrains guys as far as counts now and stuff like that. Wait till they get their processing bill. Oh, you get back. oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's I tell the guys, thing, come down, meet the boat, and I'll give you whatever you want. <laughs> I got a buddy so, on, a, on a trip right now. He told me, he's like, if I get some extra Wahoo, come pick them up. I don't want them. I'm yeah. like, 
okay. We'll be done. Exactly. <laughs> we, exactly. We, we had a charter one of one of the years, you know, 14, 15, whatever it was, we were down in San Diego. We had a charter, and we went out there, and we caught our limit of fish, you know, the yellowfin tuna. And when we got in, they didn't want all of them. You know, they, they took their share, and they said, the crew can have the rest. And it was like, oh, cool, great. So the crew loaded it up. We took it to, to one of the processors and dropped it off, and... I went back to pick it up several days later. You have a heart attack. Oh, yeah, I just when you got the bill. Yeah, heart it attack. Was, it was like, yeah, I don't think I need this much fish. <laughs> I, I had no idea. Yeah. Be, so that's know. something else to consider nowadays, guys. You no, know, those big ones they, they cost a lot. I mean, oh so yeah. That, so that the guys up here, I mean, they cut them on the boat. They take their time and yep. they do a good job of it. You know, San Diego, it's more of a processing fee. So right. I mean, it's it's right. It's good and bad. I mean, I like. Uh, donating a, a good percentage of it now yeah because just to deal with those bigger fish is a pain to mm-hmm. be honest you know and let it go to people my dad always said give it all away he says let people enjoy it while it's fresh yep. and right what do you want to freeze a bluefin for you know if you got primo sashimi you know and, and, you know give it away fresh and that's oh, just yeah. always been his you know, yeah. yeah philosophy on that let everybody enjoy it while it's fresh you know it's good yeah. that way yep yeah all right, Steve Bermudez is pining away from the old days trolling for albacore. Great Bates <laughs> says, guys, milk crates, air horns, hand lines, ah, the good old days. The boat It's line. a nomad. Boat uh, nomad. Nomads, nomad. that's yeah. the one. Nomad. Yeah. Nomads, nomads. Ball, that's right. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, thank you. The ones with no barbs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Emmanuel Navedo, who is in Florida, says, what size ring hook do you recommend for a 25 to 30 pound setup, boys? Depends on what you're fishing for. Well, give us some examples. Let's say yeah, we're fishing. fishing we were fishing the bluefin. We were fishing the bluefin. We were using number fours. Yeah, number four. fours. Yeah, I'll yeah. use a two a lot of times too. Yeah. But, fishing, but it's a gamakatsu. It's yeah, super fishing light. Fishing yellows on twenty five or yeah. thirty. I'm gonna fish like a four if I can get away with it. I'm gonna yep. fish heavy because I want to be able to pull. You know, bluefin. I probably like it's a four, a two. Uh, Mustad ring hook would be like a one zero. Like the yeah. the circle demons are great hooks and like a one zero. Uh, I know when I do the kite stuff, when I set that stuff up for the sardines, it's a 5-0 ringed hook. So I guess just, the answer to that would be all of them. It, yeah, it just depends. Depends on what fishery and what where you you're going. Yeah. yeah. What you're fishing Depends for. on what your bait is, you know. And yep. what, 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 what brand you fish. There's, they're all the same, but they're all different. You know. So you got to know what fish you're targeting. You could mic hook. out the wire on the hooks. You could do tests. Like I said, what's your touchiest fish? It's going to be a light line bluefin, right? Yes. Okay, so you're talking about like gamakatsu, a number four ringed ring with the ring, you know. The hybrids. Well, yeah, the little tiny. Yeah. yeah but you want one that's going to hold. Oh, it, it'll it'll hold. Like it'll hold. Li- like it'll hold on, wire, on. Remember the light wire circle hooks? Yeah. Those things were horrible. Those yeah. Straighten out. Yeah. They were great yeah. for perch. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. You have to. That was you know, about it. You have to figure it out because I mean, I had to switch on that freedom trip. I started out. Sort of well, I mean, off. well, we were looking at those fish, and I'm seeing the guys getting like 20, 25 pound fish. Started hooking 50 oh, pounders, and this is perfect. Goes away. Oh, well, that's because what I ended up doing. It just sprung them all, you know. That was, I, that's what I found out about up. the mustads. Yeah, they were great hooks for up to 30 pound fish, but once you got about 50 to 80 pound fish or Guadalupe, yeah. they got bit great, but they came back like a needle. Yeah. You have yeah, to really assess else. what you're fishing, folks. Yeah. Yeah. But they're all good. Yeah. Like he said, they're all good hooks. Yep. All right, good stuff, boys. More questions still coming in here. What a great show tonight. <laughs> Hit that like button. We are thoroughly enjoying your participation. TJ, Will, it is great to have you guys here, man. I mean it sincerely. Really good stuff. All right, uh, Daniel says there was a big tango, tangle maybe, in the stern. And I snagged a guy's line on my flat, flat fall. flat fall lure, and I caught one of the bigger tunas that night on the El Dorado when I went to go fishing on it. So Daniel obviously had a great trip with you guys. Uh, Daniel Lightfoot, this guy standing right next to me. Phil, you should do a two-day trip on the El Dorado. I second that. We should do that. Rocket Dog says, hi, everyone. Our limited load trips the norm now is that the new the I new yes. uh, that's you that's the new terminology yeah um Mar- marklin and myself you know we've kind of gone back and forth it's like is it really limited low when you're putting 30 people on the boat well compared to how it used 55? to be when you had 55 yes it's limited load but unfortunately our new norm is 30 
and is that really limited load? You know, it's kind of, you know, this fine line, you know, it's like, you know. 24 or whatever. Man, I can remember, you know, when I was a kid going on like the qualifier and some of these things, you have 80 something people. Dude, I thought it was oh, awesome yeah. when I used to go you on know. The, the You know, and, and fishing the Coronados, yeah. Yeah. Fish yeah. the Tornado yeah. and you only got 36 guys or 40 guys <laughs> on the boat, and you're like, this is awesome. Yeah, you know, so, instead of fifty-five. So back yeah. when I was when I was first coming into my own of being a captain, and Red Lou turned the boat over to me, fishing out of San Diego, you know, and we went out and we had just one of those trips where we knocked the crap out of the fish, you know, and I was one of the highliners, you know, my, one of my few times in the in the in the in my era where I actually kicked the the fleet's butt, and I got into the dock that night, and I didn't have a thirty passenger boat, I had a fifty-five passenger boat. Because all of a sudden we feel, like, oh, we got bunks. We're gonna sell every bunk out. And I'm, I'm how many people do I have for tonight? What, what are we, What are you talking about? No, no, no. We don't have that many. Yeah, we had that many down the boat. I had people in my galley sleeping. Had every every mattress <laughs> pad that was available. And I'm like, well, we ain't doing this. No, 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 no. DJ, when I was a kid, we'd go down to the docks, all three landings down there, and we just watched the counts. <laughs> this is before their the radios and everything else, right? We just go, okay. There's where we're fishing. That's it. They yeah, got right him. There. Yeah, yeah. Fish that's, on that boat. that's yeah. the one that caught him. That's and where yeah. we're going. Yep. Guys, you surely must I'm remember when I first started decking on the searcher. This would have been '78, something like that. Um, we had 90 people yeah. on the searcher. Yeah. 90. Oh yeah. Like going oh, yeah. the bow and trying to oh, catch yeah. the fish with yeah, fish. shoulder to shoulder. Insanity. The color, the color Insanity. rotations. Yeah. 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 You had to buy your color, and then you had to rotate like every hour. Yeah. And people wanted to have a fist fight over. That's oh, yeah. my color right oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we did away with the numbers and the colors <laughs> decades ago just because of those reasons. But, yeah, the new the new norm is limited load. Like, my capacity on the boat is 35 passengers, but I don't run at 35. I run at 30 or I run at 28. So because of that, because I'm not running at capacity, it's a limited load boat. That is. That's a, that's a nice load on that boat. Yeah. That's, that's a perfect. big boat. Yeah. You know? It yeah. really is. I like the 28 yeah. passenger load. Um, unfortunately... The way the economy and the fuel and everything, 28's not really the number. It's going to be 30. It's just I can't get away from, you know, if I, if I drop down, yes, the price has to go up. And for the most part, it works, but there's still a lot of people that can't afford it. So I'm going to probably carry the other two people and keep my price where it was at just to be, uh, you know, in that category of, you know, yeah. consumer friendly. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, I think that's a wise yeah. decision. Get your crystal balls out, boys. Tommy Tarr says, where will the yellowtail off Ensenada first show up in U.S. waters? Hold on. I'm going to make my prediction. They, right after this rain that comes through, nobody can see me with my eyes closed. I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, <laughs> they're going to be on the pile, working up South Kelp Ridge to the south end of South. It's going to be full speed down there. Well, yeah, but that's, that's Mexico. That's Mexico. They're going to be, oh, be, be, be on the, yeah. they're gonna yeah. be, yeah. they're gonna be on the nine. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be on yeah. the nine. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that was always a progression. Yeah. They always, you know, we always the fish nine, the Coronados. Then they're going to the, gonna go out to the, the rock out to the corner. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, yeah. then they'll come up the trench to Clemente and, you know. Yep. I'm loving it, man. Ho ho hopefully we have a yellowtail bite at Clemente this year because that would sure be nice. Yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you, those fish Louie caught, they were all like 20 to 28 pounds. Really oh, that's fish. quality fish. That's, that's quality fish. fish. Yeah. You know what's funny? Just last, I don't know how many years, I used to give away all my yellows. But for some reason, like, my taste buds changed. And I'd rather eat a yellow now than any. And, and we're doing different stuff. Like, I, I learned this down in Bay of Los Angeles, right? You take a yellowtail, and we had the pungaro slice it right on the boat. Small one, like a 12-pounder. Slice it right on the boat. I'm giving you a recipe, but we'll get your uh, pens and pencils out. Okay, so you, you cut it like sashimi, right? It's very simple. He squeezed lime, okay, and that gets it cooking. But, it, you know, now in Mexico, they're eating it raw, too. But, you know, it's taking enough time before it had to be cooked through with the lime, right? Hit it with Kiko Man, Tapatio. I, like, personally, me, I sprinkle a little tahini on top, right? Um... Cilantro, dice up cilantro, dice up red onions, and then you finish it with serranos. If you're a lightweight, take the seeds out. I'm kind of a lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> take the seeds out or leave the seeds in. And then serve it with some of those good chips that you get at any of the Mexican stores. And I'll tell you what, you kill it. You kill it. 
you kill it. No, I mean, we, you have it, do it in the galley. You're gonna because I did it, and kind they of went a, nuts. Yeah, hit off of the ceviche, but not yeah. white. Yeah, it's a it's a different. fresh ceviche before it's literally cooked to it turns white. But I mean, now even in Mexico, you're seeing, yeah. you know, when we're down to bail, you see oh, sushi like bars fish, now. Yeah, yeah, it's changed. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's changed. Yeah, yeah. But it's a it's a great deal, Mike. You know, it's a good thing on a boat too, because it would get the guys. You know, you get one, you, and you could do it fresh. Yep. That's what amazed me. He was cutting it right on the bonga, you know, and I go, oh, my God, we're going to eat it right now. Some of those now. times just fresh fish is huge. Yeah, it's huge. awesome. You get, you're going to get a couple of crew fish or something like that. You cook them up and then get them. People are like, that's awesome. Exactly. It's not exactly. the norm. It's not something. And I remember Raymond hated me because I would cook fish on the grill, like, <laughs> on the way home because we we catch skipjack. And like, I don't want skipjack. And so I, we'd quarter one out and we'd cook it. And he'd be in the wheelhouse, and he's, what are you cooking on? Get that fish off my grip. But just going around with that little bit of skipjack for everyone to taste, all of a sudden we went from cleaning none of the skipjack to cleaning over there half you go. the, you know, because there you people go. saw the difference. And, yeah. oh, man, yeah. this is pretty good. This yeah. is that yellow fin. I'm like, no, this is skipjack. Oh. Yeah, it's great. When go you, ahead and clean that yeah. for me. It's, it's great exactly. when you, you, you exactly. feed it when you to do them. It right. yeah. You feed it to them, and they don't know what they're eating, and it's then like they Benita. find out what they ate, and they're exactly. like, Benita's what? awesome when it's Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah, that's, Benita's that's always fresh. the best thing is having it on the boat, Yeah. and that's a great way to promote it. I mean, the same thing with the shallow. I mean, it just yeah. knocked it out of the box. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, Greg Bates uh, wants to see the galley on the El Dorado. On the two-day, I want to see the galley. I'm sure... You, you guys will let him well, see the galley. I, I would, I would assume the boat. as soon as he gets on the boat, he's got to come in to check in, and that's in the galley. So There you are, Greg. Uh, Gary Bush, what are the best small-ringed circle hooks? I've had my best luck with the demons. Your thoughts, gentlemen, all three of you. The mustad demons are awesome when they're small, but they don't hold up to big fish. They're probably one of the better small circle hooks. No. That's TJ. Uh, I'm, I'd like the demons. I like the gamagatsus. Um, both for me. It just depends on, depends on what I'm fishing for. Depends on which one I'm going to throw in the water. But and senor. Yeah, it depends on the depends yeah. on the species. So you know, can you break I'll that use... down a little bit for us? Talk about a particular species and what hook you would use. So like we were fishing the bigger bluefin. I was using the number two and the number four uh, circle ring gamagatsus. Pretty much all season this year. Um, when we were fishing. Um, for yellows and sea bass, you know, which are obviously not 100-pound tuna, I was using the demons. Um, you know, same same deal, two, number twos to number fours, you know, even even a little bit bigger. Just you know. different, different hook. Yeah, right and, and you know what, I'm no, still real old school. I rarely use circles. I I'm, I'm into hook fish. sitting, yeah. It's, it's mainly like bluefin, dorado, yeah. well, you just, stuff like that yeah. where you want to just... Put it in gear and just... Yeah. Well, that and they so, have a so I was I was fishing off. them this I'm summer. Used to. <laughs> I was fishing them this summer and in the spring just because I was lazy and I didn't change my tackle. So so I was fishing for yellows and and different species, still using a circle hook. And I'm a J hook guy. Yeah. You know, until so I, I grew until up we start fishing guy, the man. bigger bluefin, where you yeah. kind of need the circle hook to get yeah. up in the corner. And yeah, yeah my lazy my laziness this year was well. like oh, that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's it's. I mean, other than that, like yellows, fishing yellows at the island with squid or whatever. I want to fish a J hook. Yeah. Because I want to be able to. I, I like. I want to be able to get I my like bait. I want, to, I want to be able to get my bait on the hook. That too. <laughs> but you know, it, or fishing even like down at the, at the Cortez or Tanner, those yellows. I'd rather use a J hook where I can lay into them. Yeah. I'm always good. And I have yeah, more of a, is, a yeah. gap if I can bury that that sh shank into them. I can pull harder. See, I'm not worried about it just being in the corner of their mouth and possibly ripping out. But on a bluefin, I don't want him to chew me off. So I want in the corner of the mouth where I can pull on it. You know, it's it's funny. I mean, I, I use a J, and most of mine still go in the corner. Because, yeah. I, I mean, I don't let them run that much. Yeah. But I, I, it's in gear, and then I grind down. Yeah, and we all like that. Yeah. The old school day, I just like, laying into I like them. to swing a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so much great information, boys. This is a great show tonight. Um, let's get back to some questions and observations. Tommy Tarr uh. says, My dad and I fished out for <coughs> on the boat holiday. In the seventies with sixty people. Oh yeah. Crazy. That would have been yeah. Steve Giff. Steve Giff. Yeah. Right. And after that Stinger ran it. Yeah. 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 So that yeah. would be Steve back then. Yep, yeah. I remember Steve very, oh, yeah. very well. Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um yeah. Isaac, with these bigger blue fin, does it make a difference on how many people you have on the boat? 
So you're catching big bluefin? Is yes, it, it, yes, it does. Um, you know, like I said, we were taking 25 to 30 people, um, depending on if it was an open party deal or versus a charter. Um, it does does make a big difference as these big fish because they they don't have any direction. I mean, they they hook and all of a sudden it's like you're in the stern of the boat and you got bit as the fish was swimming to the bow. And by the time you decided to set the hook and put it in gear, your fish has now got 25 lines. You know, and now that fish is going down the port side of the boat back to the stern and yeah, you're all tangled. And then, oh, in the middle of the tangle, three other fish just got bit and here we go, we're having fun. So <laughs> yes, it's, it's, you know, passenger wise, more jigs in the water dropping down through the school more fish are going to get hooked. Um, I've been on a couple of trips where I went with friends and we've had four or five guys and we didn't get as many bites. We did catch our fish and didn't have the headache of being tangled or, or being in other them. people's way, yeah. but we didn't get as many bites as I've seen on the open party boats or the party boats that are dropping down 25, 30 jigs and hooking four or five fish at one time. So and You hook those four or five, now you got five out of the school that are swimming around underneath the boat. Next thing you know, you hook another one, then you hook another one, then you hook another yeah, one. Yeah, you keep them wrong. Yeah. yeah. You got fish swimming and fish on the hooks, you're going to catch more. But, you know, so it's it's six ways to Sunday, you know. It's like having more people on the boat, you get more opportunities to get bit. You know, you get more chances of being tangled, more chances of being cut off, you know, versus not having enough people where, yeah, you might get bit, but you might not. So it's... It kind of goes both ways. It's it's just sometimes like I say, it's good, sometimes it's bad. You know, but big right. fish. I'd say twenty four to twenty eight guys on the yeah, Eldorado. Yeah, plenty yeah. Of I'd say 20, 25 oh, yeah. to twenty eight yeah. on, on the Eldorado. It's, it's, it's more plenty. got eighty five feet. Come it's on. more Plus it's more elbow stir, space nice stir, than it is yeah. anything. You don't yeah. want to be in tight quarters trying right. to fight big fish yeah. because it becomes. I'm on the rail here. You're on the rail mm -hmm. there. I got one guy right. You just don't have enough separation to. And then, of course, then you have everybody in the bow. So if you've got, you got to have space up there on those big fish because they end up all up on the bow together at some point in time. And so now you've got six or seven going. Well, if you've got 50 people fishing or 40 people, you don't even have any space on the bow. You've got all the extra lines. It just, you, you want you want the elbow room, just enough space in between everybody else so you have space just to work yeah. and move around. Otherwise, you just end up in a tangle and then the frustrations and the tempers and then we became we become anger management coaches as well as <laughs> deck and crew members because the passengers want to fight each other does that happen often? oh gosh it does it yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah you've never come on you got to remember the look of the guy that hooks a fish right next to the guy fighting the fish and has nothing to do with it and he loses his fish and looks at the guy next to him with the nastiest look like just made me lose my fish way to go thanks a lot with a few expletives there, you know, mixed in. But, yeah, it, it gets yeah. nasty. You, know, so you, you guys got to de-escalate. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I've, been, I've been between people, you know, and, and, you know, calm down. You shut up. You go over there. Yeah, and, three rows you know. fishing in the corner back in the day. Yeah, you, know, you yeah. had to learn how to manage your people. That was crazy back in the old days. Seven, four dumb. people on a twilight drunk, oh, cow, yeah, you know, yeah. fishing. And, you know, dude, yeah. I was 22 years old telling two old guys to stop it or I was going to hit yeah. both of them with a bait scoop. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was six, <laughs> sixteen on the Monte Carlo with eighty eight people fishing fishing. Oh yeah, fishing this, and, well, there's yeah, eighty eight people. Parents. Friday, Friday yeah. night and playing you know babysitter and parent control and it's like 16, <laughs> 16 years old telling the thirty year old drunk to go sit his ass down you know. <laughs> but you know I I would take a big fish on heavy line any day now as opposed to catching the, the hook in the fifteen pounders that are zipping around now, ninety now miles an hour. Here's the the worst part about those big fish. Okay, you hook that big fish on heavy line in the dark, and that fish comes up in five minutes and is as green as can be, and these guys, and it's it, you, until they learn, and he tells them the same thing, stop trying to hit him in the head. Don't ever hit a 100-pound fish that's green in the head. <laughs> ever, 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 ever. You know, I missed, I missed a trip, and they had a bite like that on the XL, and the cook... I remember uh, one of the deckhands says, do not hit that thing. Don't gaff it in the head. He dug for the thing, hit it in the head, and his flip-flops were right where he left <laughs> him, and he was over the side of the boat. That 100-pound yeah. fish going the wrong direction it's... will yank you or pull that gaff out yeah. of your hand faster. Yeah. And it's it's hor and you, you're looking at each other, and, you know, I've worked with a few guys, and we just look at each other, and this thing's coming up hot. We're like, we're going to get so smoked. When I gaff this thing, you better have my back because we're going to get railed. And it happens, and you're just along for the ride until the other guy sticks it. 
and hope to God you hit it in the belly or it just the gaff doesn't fly out of your hand because if it starts going, you can't stop it. Well, these these guys are used to saying, you know, do it eyeball to eyeball. No, well, yeah, on a 20 pound fish, yeah, 20 it's great, pound, right? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, 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 you get those big guys. Eyeball that's been in the water for 10 yeah, minutes. Let me I, see how that works out for yeah, you. Yeah, I, I like the collar, I like the belly, you know, I yeah, like the I shoulder. Would, yeah. I like you the know? belly. Yeah. Yeah. That big yeah. fish over we had the uh, we had several fish this year where you know we we were all taught you know it's a headshot headshot eyeball shot and we had several fish that were hit in the head you know and it wasn't the hundred pounders it was probably 60, 65 pound fish and they're trying to bring it up and it's just like bye call for a backup like you know yeah like, you gotta have two gaps and then yeah oh. yeah yeah so we started we started that you know if it's if it's these bigger size fish you know fifteen above you know it's like if you don't have it. You know, in, in, in a collar and the shoulder and the belly, you know, somewhere where it's got some girth, you know, if you're in the soft part of the body, you know, you got to put another gaff in it. Hey, I remember the days when you yeah. used to come out on the searcher, man, and the pressure was on. Double eyeballs. Eyeball shot only, man. Like that. But, but, but we didn't have you these. We that. didn't have, yeah, well, I know, but I mean, it, it wasn't that, this size fish. No. But that's that's right. what they're saying. That's right. Yeah, yeah. those guys that want them, like, hey, it's a 20-pound tuna. Right. Gaff them in the eyes or don't, or gaff them in the head or don't gaff yeah. them at all. I don't care yeah. if you miss. Yeah, Break was, them off, yeah. I don't care, but I want a headshot. Okay. Yeah. When, I, when I first started overnight fishing, it was on the Mustang. Because right as you were stepping off and Redley was kind of taking over. And, yeah. And yeah, the, all the Buddha head charters, yo, you didn't hit anywhere but the head and an yeah, eyeball on right. it. And if you missed, oh, you, yeah, you, you were got told. The look. You were told to go away. You were just <laughs> yeah, flat I, out. I want him go gaffing away. my no, fish no, next time. <laughs> there were a few days that I got, oh, I, yeah. got, I got banned from the stern and had to go sit in the bow. <laughs> my gaffing skills as a young kid were not that good. That yeah. is great yeah, stuff. But... Really, really great stuff, guys. Hey, Jeff Yeomans, 540 Slinger. He says he's hoping for a good yellowtail bite at Clemente as well, TJ. He yes. Seconds yes. you. Uh, uh -huh. Stimulate says circle hooks have their purpose, but if you're not used to them, it's like, where'd the fish go? You know, they're gone. It's, re it's yeah. refining the, the you, you can't swing. As yeah. much as you want to, you get in the habit of swinging, you pull it right out of your mouth. Hey. <laughs> yeah. That's a hey. Yeah. You want to come out here? And Michael, come on. Yeah. This is where we made it. Michael Lee Bowen, everybody. Gives, keeping that's, us that's abreast of the fish, fish count. Right we got oh, it. Here we go. We don't fool around here, boys. We're oh, yeah. No, we got Michael. we got the man out there keeping up. <laughs> All right, man. We got live fishing going on here, too, with Michael hey, Lee Bowen. Doesn't what get any better that. than that. What a great show, everybody. Good yeah. job. All right, uh, let's see. Um, Albert Ponce, what a treat. Over 120 years of experience on deck tonight. Yeah, <laughs> man. You guys Man, are, we are old. Old. <laughs> yeah, old. <laughs> oh yeah, wait, wait to make us feel good. It's yeah, yeah, that feels exciting. great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mackie, can each of you guys describe, good question, your favorite trip of last year? Does a trip stand out? Start with you, Will, then we'll go to TJ, and then we'll go to Danny. You have one that stands out for you? Favorite trip? I do. It wasn't with him. It was on another one. Uh another boat, and it was Tanner Bank Fish and Bluefin, and it was one of those days you couldn't do anything wrong. It's like I think I was done with Bluefin at 10.30 in the morning on a day and a half. We, we, I slid over to where he had some yellows the day before, you know, because we talk. I slid inside there. We hooked some, I think we caught seven or eight of the bigger yellows, and I think I cut off another 20 or 25 Bluefin on top of that, and it was just, it was just <laughs> one of those days where you just couldn't, I mean, you're trying to catch a yellowtail and you throw a bait out there and oh stupid bluefin. Here comes another 25, 30 pounder. Cut that one off. <laughs> and so I mean it, you just you don't do it. I mean, as far as local scene, you know. Plus, I mean, I got privileged last year and okay, and there's another one that stands out when I did long range. I got to see two uh two yellows at the rocks that were over sixty pounds. Oh. And nice. one was on a fly line, one was on a dropper loop. And nice. just seeing two big fish like that that you normally never see, you know. The 25 to 60 pound class yellows eating the fly line and the dropper loop in <coughs> 30 fathoms of water is just, it was where we weren't fishing them before. We were sitting at the rock proper instead of out on the bank. So that that's one there where we had really good yellow fishing, but then running the boat, I think the other one was me having that, having that bite and just my anglers being stoked and day and a half going, look, we can fish here till dark, but the guys are like, it's 5.30, let's go home. Then taking off and putting in easy, getting a nice dinner, everybody get a nice sleep, and then coming back to the dock. 
That's always a good trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you got to cut them off. Yeah. 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 TJ. So, so my, my most memorable trip last year was uh, the bluefin were biting in the dark, and I was, uh, you know, doing the up all night, up all day, you know, back to back. Um, you know, um, my, my second tickets were, you know, not really my fishermen, you know, and I, and I really wanted to be part of it. So I was starting to get a little burned out because Clemente wasn't biting during the day. You know, you'd go do your nighttime stuff and then go to Clemente and you basically didn't catch anything. It just wasn't happening. So I decided to throw the boat on an 11 to 11, kind of reverse overnight deal. So we left at 11 o'clock to get out there for just the nighttime bite. We'd fish until 6 in the morning and come home. And so the first trip we did, we pulled our two-day permit because by leaving at 11 o'clock before, before noon, and then we scheduled it to where our, re our, re our return was actually 1 p.m. So we're actually past the threshold. We were able to pull our two-day permit. So we got on the scene right as it was getting dark. We were 45, 50 miles from home out to the west. And right as we got to the zone, I got a sonar mark. We turned, we threw some bait, and it started biting. 35 to 50 pound bluefin. Oh, started sweet. biting and it was just full speed ahead here we go and that bite and that drift landed you know basically we had 30 31 guys on this trip i mean the boat was sold out and overbooked by one because there was a complication in the in the oh no i remember that trip i remember watching you live on instagram yeah. it was biting so i'm trying to think of the passenger numbers i think i got the number wrong we ended up with 98 fish total 98, 96 fish was our total, something like that, 96. But it, like I say, the bite went to where we got our, our, our limit, you know, right at midnight. We we got our first day limit and was like, okay, let's start working on the second day limit. And everyone went, what? And I'm like, yeah, guys, we're on day two. You know, we're past 12 <laughs> o'clock and we're on day two. And, and all of a sudden was like, we can keep fishing. And yeah, you can keep fishing. We got our two-day permit. You're in the second day. And, and the fish cooperated. They bit right up until we got, like the, I want to say, four fish away from limits. And it stopped biting. I was you had like, good ones too. Damn it. You had some yeah. hundred pound fish. Yeah, and then yeah, we did have some bigger fish come through as it got dark. You know, dark, dark. But the fifty pounders kind of hung out. And then okay, we had to start moving the boat. And now you've got the whole fleet's there. Thirty boats are all jockeying for position. And I'm like, I need four more fish and I can go home. I just need four more fish and I can go home. <laughs> <laughs> it was like we turned on the center so we'd hang three and we'd get one. I'm like, ah. And so we did that to, I think, like, 3 in the morning. And finally it was like, yes, we hit our limit. We can go home. And, you know, and I remember coming down and helping the boys cut fish. And, you know, it was, it was just a phenomenal deal, you know. We ended up doing uh, four of those trips. And we were very fortunate because we didn't get skunked. Um, you know, we ended up catching fish on every one of the trips. But that trip there, was, like I say, we, we went into a bite right at dark. And it bit all the way until it was time to go home. You know, and, and just Doesn't phenomenal. better than that. Just yeah. phenomenal. Danny, I'm guessing the American Angler. Yeah, right yeah. You know, well, my eighth day, because of the weather, we cut. they ended up cutting it down to five, which turned out to be a blessing in disguise. And, you know, they know. And you got to trust. Folks, don't ever forget that. You trust in their decision, you know. And we did, and, and Brian and Ray, we trust, too. It was the same deal, and it turned out to be perfect because we went out, and the weather was up. And I was a little upset at one time because I got some in intel that there were some 60-pound tails at Alejos. And I was really... Was probably about the same time I was down there. Yeah, and I was I was <laughs> chomping at the bits, you know, thinking about the tails. So I was a little depressed, but, you know, as we got out there that first night, we were fishing, you know, just uh, west of Clemente, and we were taking them over the rail. That was when it was nicer. Yeah, yeah, and it just lead. In fact, there was only the big boats out there. There was yeah. only the Cadillacs. Yeah. You couldn't be out there in a small boat that yeah. night. And we were taking them over the rail. But I mean, it was so good. You know, we'd right, we pull up on a spot, we'd all hang, and you know, all of a sudden I'm looking up, and it's the first time I've seen them come up that high. But Cap hit the rail, looking at the water coming up the scuppers, and I looked up the rail, and I'm pinned on a, on 130 pound. On the rail. We're all pinned on the rail with these fish because it was that good a bite, too. It dips and it goes through the bulwark. And, bad. and it, rough. two <laughs> feet of water from the bow coming down. And, I mean, I filled my boots. My boots ended up in the, the engine room that night. But, I mean, phenomenal. But from that night on, it just it laid down. just got better. And we, we were short, so we made some good time. We had, we had a blast at Clemente goofing around. And then we finished off. Fishing the rock cut, which I've never seen red fishing <clears throat> that good. 
So, I mean, it was just unbelievable trip. And we yep. didn't have the four days of running, you know, yeah, yeah. Arr, down, the down the lane. Yeah. So, you know, it was a blessing in disguise. So you, whatever, uh, you know, whatever we're given, you know, we'll take it. And it yeah. worked out. Yeah. For, it worked out Yeah, there's, time, there's times yeah. you got to duck. Yeah. There's times yeah. you got to bob and weave but, and make that good decision. Yeah. There's sometimes we make we make that wrong decision because we do want to catch fish and you get your yourself caught out there and like, oh. Yeah. So the moral of the story, folks, is you trust you trust in the captain's decisions, and and uh, for us, you know, it always works out, you know, because they're interested in your safety and well, we want and safety, well-being too. We, we fish for a living. Oh it's not yeah, like we don't, no, no, we, don't we want to just go out there and go fishing and yeah, ah, you're on the boat. I don't care if yeah. catch anything or not. Too bad. I get no. Yeah. I want to catch fish. Yeah, but one of my back. problems that I've I've had, you know, fishing as San Nick as I do, you know, for the the most of my seasons, you know, and and the Elder Ride's really great. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. San Nick is to the west, and it rides really great. And there's nights I'm laying upstairs, and it's just purring along, and and okay. And all of a sudden, it's five thirty in the morning. I get up, and we turn the boat sideways, and I go, "What the hell are we doing here? Turn this thing around. Let's go home." You know, it's unfishable. You know, but you wouldn't tell with the way the boat rides until you yeah. stop, and yeah. then all of a sudden, it's like, "Sorry, guys, we gotta go." And they, I've had that a few times. You know, where it's yeah. Like, yeah. Got to go back to the dock. But, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. All yeah. right, good question and great answer. Stimulate <laughs> says, you know what? I always catch. At least the wife thinks so, because I, if I skunk out, I drop by the 99 Ranch Market on the way <laughs> yeah. and load up. All right, good idea. Sam Roberts says, headshots. Now that's being spoiled. That's the way... Those Sam, was that right? yeah, little yeah, Sam, that was, yeah. That's how it was. That's, that's how right. It was. You had to learn how to gaff him in the yeah. head. Yeah. You didn't gaff yeah, him. Absolutely. And like I said, if you didn't gaff him in the head, you were you were banned. You go to the bow, kid. You were yelled at. Well, I yeah. remember, man. You go to the Immense bow. pressure, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you'd get in. I, from, I think you'd the get only in. thing that we still headshot or howled it. You want to hit that thing like right there and up and over. You don't want to. You don't want to mess. You don't want to wait up over and down to the deck. Yeah, or or in a in the kill box or wherever you're gonna put it. Because yeah, because they'll do up, that flop. He's not happy. Right. That's a nasty it's flop a one, they have. It's a one hook over the rail, one motion, don't stop. <laughs> yep. It's bad. All right, everybody, hit that like button. Tremendous participation tonight. Everybody's loving the show. I am too. Let's go to Gabriel de la Trinidad, a Daiwa BG four thousand. Is it okay for Calicos, Bonitas, and Barracuda? Great show. I'm sure it would, but I don't use spinning reels. Yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. it's fine. I'm is, sure is it's fine. Is that what that is, a spinning reel? That's yeah, That's why yeah. I have no yeah. idea what that is. It's a 4,000 yeah. size, yeah? 4,000 yeah. pretty yeah. big. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, right. It Absolutely. Should be perfect, Gabriel. Yep. Uh, Rocket Dog, I need to get on the L, though, but it's a hard ticket to get. So a lot of people love fishing the L, though, man. How... Can he get on there? What phone number should he call? Is there a website? Uh, it's the website. It's longbeatsportfishing.com, uh, Boat El Dorado. Um, you can also get it off our Facebook page. Uh, uh, El Dorado Sport Fishing on Facebook has a link to uh, booking. Um, you can call the landing. It's 562-432-8993. Um, when you do call, they're going to want to tell you to book it online because you'll get your... Uh, your best discount by booking it online. If they make the reservation in the office, uh, there's a service fee that the office will put on you because they basically want you to book it through the website. Our, our discounts are built in uh, through the website that way. But that's uh, primarily, like I say, once the trips come up, it's first come, first serve. And then um, once you get to the landing, first person at the landing gets first bunk, bunk selection. You pick your bunk when you sign in. That way, you know, you can... Uh, hey, how can you it. argue with that? First ah, come, you know, first serve. Well, it used to be back in the day, first come, first serve, down on the bunk, throw your hat on the bunk, and then you'd go upstairs and get your beer, and then all of a sudden you got the fight in the bunk room because somebody, somebody took your, your hat stuff. and threw it on the floor. <laughs> so we took care of that, and basically when you, you check go. in, you get your ticket, you get your bunk, you bunk know, assignments, there you everything's go. done perfect. in one shot. And, perfect, perfect. You know, yep. We have bunks for handicapped people, you know, middle bunks. If you need a, a CPAP machine next to an outlet, we do have a few outlets down there. So you know we have bunks that are reserved for handicaps and oh that's you know, awesome. So we try to man, try to man. accommodate it, but yeah, five six two four thirty two eighty nine ninety three longbeatsportfishing.com and Eldorado on Facebook, Eldorado Sport Fishing on Facebook and Instagram. All right, good stuff. Sam Roberts wants to know, Danny, is that a dreamer jacket? Y- yes, it is, Sam. On? Yes, it is. Alan gave it to me. You know, here you go. How's that? Hey, move <laughs> huh? Way, Danny. Huh? Move where? Gotta get in the picture. Oh, that way more. I gotta get more in the picture. All right. You're right, Sam. Good. 
Good observation. Perfect. Yeah, it, you know, here's a guy that, and you guys will agree here, Alan, there's nobody better no, no. with the croaker and no. anything than no, he is never, the, never, Alan, you know, nobody was better. You know. I mean, he's better at being a ghost than they are. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so he's one into the aisle. Absolutely. Next thing you know, he's gone and comes in. He pulls <laughs> in. He's like, "Where'd you get those?" Yeah, he's was, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah nobody's yeah, better. I, I've I've seen him a couple times that I've been at that island, and it's like he's here, he's, he's there, he's here, he's back, <laughs> he's over there. It's like if you if you watch him, I mean, you'll see him running around. You still have no idea where he's fishing. Well, see, that's you know. a smart deal. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, there's there's captains, young captains. You'll see them, you know, and and uh, you always know where they caught their fish. Because whether they got them in the afternoon or whatever, they're going to be on that spot first thing in the morning. So they kind of give it away, you know. So there's 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 a lot of, a lot of psychology to the whole deal mm -hmm. too, you know. But yeah, wow. that's that's a fun deal. All right, good stuff. Uh, Doug Ruben El Sueño. Hey Doug, good to see you. <laughs> Hello friends. See you this weekend at the Bart Hall Show. That's right. The Bart Hall Show is going on at the Del Mar Fairgrounds today through Sunday. I'll be out there on Saturday having some fun. I hope I see you there, Doug. Greg Sheridan says, uh, good evening. What's your go-to when throwing jigs? Preferably, what reel is your preference for throwing the iron? Want to start with Will? Uh, I, I'm old school. I, I still throw my jigs on a 300 uh, mule, a three, 322. And a, the narrow. The narrow. Yeah. On a Calstar 100J. With six inches cut off the butt, I don't want the tip. I want I want all the. But I mean, nowadays you can't get that. So I would say, if I was gonna throw a jig reel. What are the ones that we have from Akuma? The, the Tesaro the, twelve. The Tesaros, yeah, a twelve or a five, would be a great jig reel. Uh, just higher gear ratios now, or you got to slow your jigs down. Before a five to one, you you know you wind fast or. A Taddy 45 was a slow wine. You'd have the real slow, mm -hmm. methodical <coughs> kick. Mm -hmm. And now you got to go even slower, that little, because it's so fast, you know. But I still prefer a, a fiberglass, a complete fiberglass rod if I'm throwing a jig. I want that thing to load up and fly. I don't like that. I know you got the composites. But oh, yeah, no, no. I, yeah, I, I, want like it, I want it to take off like a, I, I hit my trajectory compared to like a gla the old glass rods I used to use. You hit it like a golf ball. I mean, it. It. You just want that thing to keep rising and rising and rising. You know. You, you the only thing I golf ones. swing is a sardine. <laughs> I can, I can Perfect. golf swing that sardine right out there. There you go. I golf swing and get in the cart and go that way. TJ, <laughs> <laughs> favorite reel? Um. So on on a couple of my personal boat rods that I'll bring down and, and abuse all season, I have the Daiwa uh, Saltiga. Uh, two speed, Saltiga, I think. Is that right? Saltiga, Salta, yeah. or Saltus. Uh, Sal Saltus. Um, so that's I've got that on, on a couple of my rods. I got a couple of two speeds. Oh, there we go. Nice. There you go. Oh, so, sandbed. Come on, Mike. He's only Mike short on one side. This is a, this is on a, one side. This is a fishing show. It is there a it fishing is, show. Right? That's it. Is fisherman. Look at that. There it is. Right, that right. is. Oh. All right, come back with that's a That's a fisherman for yeah, you. Yeah, come back with a spot. That's exactly. He's awesome. And then. So now, now when I'm, I'm fishing on the boat, primarily we're, I'm using the boat rods, and uh, we've got a few uh, United Composite rods with some uh, Akuma uh, Tesaro 12s on them, and so that's kind of been my, you know, this is a, my everyday fishing rod because I'm not there to, to catch fish. I'm not there to, to fish in front of the pastor that paid his money. So if I, if I cast out a jig and I hook a yellow or I hook a barracuda, I'm looking for someone to hand it to. So now we're using the boat rods instead of our personal rods because we have had a few of the incidents um, you know, this past year, even the year before, where Brian's uh, tile fish was being used by a passenger, and it was, there you go, there goes the rod, and it's, oh, you know, so. Oh, he, he still, he still yells it, he, I hand <laughs> off that little, I have a Newell 229 I bring with me to yeah, work, yeah. and he just shakes his head when I hook a fish on it, he's like, really, you're going to hand that one off, really? <laughs> It's not so really? much the reel, it's that it's long it's, ass, it's a, and it's a heavy. 270, <laughs> eight foot fiberglass bait rod. Which is awesome for live bait fishing. Yeah, yeah. But it's a butt kicker because but he it's hands parabolic. it to Joe Bull it Fisherman. To it's like, dude, will you stop? <laughs> it works. You know, it's so different because I'm fishing straight graphite, so you can't hand it to people unless right, they really right, know how to fish because right. you have they to understand. Lose them. With, the, with the fiberglass, it's yeah. hard for them to lose them too because well, they can't you know really what? pull a hook. See, for me, the recovery, 
Oh, I know, but and well, we had stroke? that conversation. Yeah, but I'm going to have two fish, three fish before guys yeah, bring it in pull, one I on a thing. Really yeah. on that other rod, yeah. but it's you got to know how to pull on yeah. them. But it, it, it's user friendly in a way that they don't lose them. It keeps that constant pressure, and they can't slack line it when they're trying to pump it because yeah. it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. recover it's, that fast. It's a good passenger pleaser. Yes, for yes, sure. Yes. Yeah, when that's what I use. But, when uh, I was but on I've the seen boat. them abused. I would, I would, I would never <laughs> hand a graphite rod to a customer. I, I, it's abused. Right, it's right, been yeah, abused a handful right. of people. Yeah, yes, it is. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's not. Yeah, yeah he's nice handed it to a few people. I'm like, <laughs> don't give that to him. <laughs> then I think, oh, he must have done something to make you mad. Okay, yeah, I understand. Yeah, we'll get even. We'll get even. Okay, we we get even in our own way on the boats. Hey, uh, they come back. Yeah, that's right. They come back. Sure. Emmanuel Navello in Florida says, hit that like button. Andrew H., I don't know if any of you guys have the answer to this. I don't. What do you think the price point for the Daiwa Alexa 500 will be? I don't know. The, do price, know point, the price point of the 300, I think, was 199 So I'm thinking a 400 would probably be in the 500. Yeah. No, 250 yeah. yeah. So you're probably looking at 299 289 I didn't even know they made a 500. Yeah, it's just coming out. Okay. Uh, we're going to debut it at, uh, over at Island Fishing Tackle. Uh, they're, they're, not, they're, they're, they're not bad reels. The Lexus, they're not a, they're not a Tranks. They're, they're going to be cheaper than a Tranks for sure. Uh, I, 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 I've, caught a, I've caught a 109 pound yellow fin on, or blue fin on a 400. That was a feat. I mean, the guy looked at me when I buttoned the drag down. He goes, you're going to button the drag down that tight? I'm like, dude, we're already losing. What's the difference? You're you know, on 30 pound. It yeah. doesn't matter what you do. It's yeah. already, yeah. I, can, I can let you run run away from you and lose all your line, or we can button the drag down and pull, and we're either going to get him or we're going to break him off. But uh, I don't think that reel was ever the same after that. <coughs> you know, it's would, it's amazing. You know, I mean, you, tell him. where you go saltwater and freshwater, because I've taken a uh, Alexa 400 down to Guyana, and I did uh, an air primer that was about 280. You know, but I mean, it's in the lagoon. It's a yeah, little yeah. different, but I mean, it has it had the power and it had the casting. It's you not. Know. It's not. Yeah. they're not bad reels. Oh no, no, they're great. They never I've got had a three hundred at home. But yeah, yeah. You know, I don't use it as much, but it's there. Exactly. All right, good, good stuff. Uh, Sam Roberts is admiring your dreamer jacket there. Well, boys, <laughs> we're starting to uh, we're way past an hour and a half in this show. Holy shit! Doesn't smokes. seem like it, does it? What are your windbags, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It goes Hot quick. Air. It goes quick. <laughs> it does go, TJ, we're getting close to quick. Tony coming in here with the pepper spray and saying, I want to go home with my wife. <laughs> get out of here, you bum. Hey, well, Michael Lamone's got to get a calico yeah, and, a, a and, and a white sea bass and what else? Uh, maybe a salmon or something? sea bass time for him down there at the dock. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm that's telling true. you, man. Um, let, uh, if we're going to wrap this up, why don't we, do you guys give us just your last pitch about what you think's coming this next year? More importantly, how we can get on the El Dorado with you guys. What do I think coming? Uh, you think more bluefin? I, 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 they're already here. So I think it's going to be a good yeah. bluefin year. Uh, hopefully there's, there, I hope those yellows move off the bank and move to an island uh, where it's better for the, the northern boats up here. Uh, when they're at Clemente, Catalina, uh, Santa Barbara, yeah, Nick. Absolutely. The L.A., Newport, you know, yeah. boats do better. Yeah. When they're at the bank, it gets crowded because you have everybody from Redondo Beach, even uh, Oxnard, headed to the Tanner for the Cortez, and it becomes a boat show of everybody piled on top of each other. You know, when I was a, when I was younger, yeah. The, yeah. the San Diego boats didn't fish the, the Tanner or the Cortez. It was just the northern boats in the fall, and now it's everybody goes out to the Tanner and Cortez when those fish are there. So when they get on the islands, if you're not sure how to fish the island or if the San Diego guys, they just don't fish San Clemente Island the same way everybody else up here that's been taught. And it just it makes it better for us when they're biting because the San Diego guys don't want to chase them around Clemente. Or, yeah, we've, know, always, they, we've always had an edge there at yeah. Clemente, that's, so, that's for sure. Uh, and yeah. hopefully we get a good spring sea bass fish and the, the squid stay around and we get that ability to catch yellows squid fishing as well as sea bass, you know, and then transition straight to, you know, possibly fishing those blue fan in between and stay busy. Yeah, you know, I wanna, no, absolutely. And, yeah, absolutely. You know, El Dorado Sport Fishing, uh, you know, Long Beach Sport Fishing's website, the El Dorado, and then click on, jump on a boat, and we start running. 
Hey, uh, TJ, quick question for you. Raymond Pacheco wants to know, you got any of those big boy sizes for the Eldo Windbreaker jackets? Um, the Eldo jackets are um, normally order and have done, um, like we got to pre-order it and get them made. Uh, we did do an order jacket. It's four jackets um, at a time. I think right now I have a double X. Uh, currently in possession with no name on it. It's got the nice embroidered logo of the boat, but no actual um, passenger name. Um, but I think Double X is the biggest one I have at the moment. You know, TJ, I, speaking of that, I, I bought out all the inventory and I helped design that the short sleeve jacket. Yeah. Have you seen those? I have. Okay. All I have left, and I bought out the big, all the big sites, I bought everything. I have extra larges, Double X, and triples, and the triples are huge. So extra I mean, large, right? extra, nice. triple X, yeah. Well, you said an extra large. And right? extra large yeah. and double X. So I bought out everything that they had. You know, we were able to sell everything else. But right. yeah, if you needed, I get you a good deal on okay. all that stuff. Well, but perfect. I mean, you could logo it yourself too. It's yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, those things are. The you know, one yeah. of the best things uh, for summertime. That's all I wear. Yeah. Because you know, you 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 got the zip up. You yeah. go to the bait thing. Yeah. Well, it's like my hoodie. My hoodie is right? you know cut off exactly. here. Exactly. I took it and had it. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, no, we so, uh, we're, yeah, we'll, cool. we'll have a shirt a order and yeah. a jacket order and all that sure. stuff kind of going March, April once we kind of come online. You cool. know, although it, we finished the end of the year and all the money that we had left over wasn't for shirts; it was for maintenance. So once we get up and running, we'll kind of throw it back out there. there. You but go. Yeah, Ray, you got my number. Give me a call. You know, I'll get you a jacket. Let me know what size. We we do big boy. Like I said, I've got some five X T shirts on the boat right now because we've got some. Uh, What's the, what's the new term? Fluffy. We got some fluffy guys. <laughs> so, so yeah, we'll we'll accommodate you whatever you need. We'll make it happen. Ray Johnson awesome. says, "Great boat, the El Dorado." He's talking to you, oh, TJ. Yeah. yeah, what a great show, you guys. Anything else, TJ? You want to wrap this up with, or yeah, you know, it's like say we uh, the boat went through some struggles. You know, we uh, you know had a a moment where the boat wasn't doing as good, and you know a lot of bad juju and a lot of bad uh, publicity of the boat. You know, we've uh, worked really hard. We've got our uh, RSW on the boat finally. No more freezers. Um, fish, fish handling is taken care of really well. Um, you know, we uh, on hot days, we don't work out the deck. We work out of the fish hold. So it takes us a little bit of time to process the fish. But um, the way we're doing it is taking care of the catch. We do have two below deck freezers. So when your catch is done, we're not throwing it back down in RSW. So your fillets sit in salt water. Your fillets actually go into a chiller. Um, it's an icebox freezer type deal, so they stay fresh. Um, like I said, we've made lots of improvements. Um, Crew-wise, um, got some great guys. Got Will running the boat with me now. Um, you know, got Stumpy and Sean and Michael running my deck. Brian covering the galley. Uh, Captain Butch Diaz uh, running relief with us. Um, you know, a lot of good crew members, a lot of experience, a lot of time. And like I say, always upgrading the boat. So Good stuff, Danny. That's you awesome. No, I mean, that's awesome. I, what a... Blessing having you guys down here. And I, I Thanks want for to thank having you, us. Man. It's a great show. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's so, perfect. It's been a long time. So yeah. I have to come bug you again. You got it. No, bug me anytime, man. It's oh, yeah. 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 I love it. All right. Fantastic All right, show. folks. I'll see you for the morning briefing in a few more hours, everybody. And uh, can't thank you enough, Will, TJ, and Danny, of course. Great show tonight. See ya. <laughs>